Okay, we are live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, so we have a slight technical issue. One of our cameras is not working, so we're not going to be seeing May's beautiful face. <laughs> I will try to resolve this as soon as I can during the stream itself. Um, but we do have the palette streaming here, and we've got the painting. So that should be good. And um, yeah, so thank you guys for coming. So we're going to be doing this Rings of Power painting of the Balrog. Mm -hmm. um, that's just lashing at this tree from Rings of Power. And it's a pretty epic shot. And May's going to do this in a maximum of four hours. Yeah. Hopefully three. Hope that would be really cool, but I wouldn't put money on it. Um, yeah, we'll see. I'm like planning on doing it kind of, I don't know where to look now. I, it's all right, don't okay. worry about it. Um, yeah, uh, I'm like planning on doing it kind of loosely because there was like a lot of texture in like the tree leaves and like in the fire and the smoke and everything and also even in the rocks. So pretty much everything except for the sky can be like really, um, really nicely textured. So I'm looking, to f looking forward to playing around with that. Um, as you can see, I have only the transfer. There's no like um, like underpainting pass or anything. So I'm really just going to be doing this whole thing um, start to finish, hopefully, in this one session. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose. Um, oh, yeah. So here's my palette. It's a little bit crazy again. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also looking for like a brush that's like soft. This, this will suffice, okay. Um, so I have like this cluster up here, um, like this half, I guess, is like all for the sky on the left half of the reference. And then this is all my fire. This is all my, these are like my rocks, like in the bottom middle part. And then this is like the color of the Balrog, I think, like his horns. And they, it really, like, really stands out even on the palette. Um, so yeah, I think the, is there a plan? Is there ever a plan? Um, I think I want to use like these two shadows and like fill in as much stuff as possible. So like all the smoke and like the rocks and then just kind of work into that. Or I'll start with like this, these really bright reds and then kind of like put the shadows in on top of that. So I'm not like really sure yet. Um, I might do kind of both, honestly. Yeah, so I'll probably like try to, I'll probably try to like cover as much ground as possible, and then kind of like work in on top, like all the prima. So it'll probably get pretty, pretty puddly, pretty textured. Um, but yeah, should be fun, I think. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, Becky, she is painting on a panel, as uh, we often do, and. Um, oh, are they asking for size? And Becky is wondering how it was prepped. Well, it was prepped to gesso and a mm -hmm. transfer. Um, yeah, nice, Melanie. Glad to have you here. Melanie said, so happy to actually catch a bit of a live stream for once. <laughs> and for those of you who are seeing the feed right now, there's a little bit of a static in our camera of May's, our headshot camera. So I'm going to keep working on that to make it better. But we've we're got you up and running over here. Oh, cool. It's just a matter of making it a clean feed. Mm -hmm. Starting with blue, I see. Yeah. I think I want to start with the sky, at least like kind of put general values in because I feel like it'll be kind of easy to get lost in like all the cool action stuff going on, like with the fire and the tree and everything. So I want to at least like establish the colors and the shapes. Um, and also because like it doesn't have to be super tightly rendered. I just want to like fill the space, establish the atmosphere and whatever. So. Cool. Yeah. Let us know if you have any questions. I am a little bit distracted <laughs> while we get this other camera set up. And I'll return to your questions as soon as I can.
There we go. It's working. <laughs> yep. We got it. Cool. Yeah, I was having a little bit too much fun before <laughs> before the live stream. So I kind of tripped on the wire and probably messed it up a little bit. So I'm glad we, glad we recovered. <laughs> <laughs> yes, May was very excited I too. was having a great time. Yeah, we were very excited about our live stream and <laughs> we were kind of just dancing around and then one thing led, led to, to another. another. <laughs> it was all fun and games until yeah. Yeah. somebody tripped over a wire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it happens. It happens, you know. Okay, so I'm catching up with the chat now. Mm. Um, for those of you who are new to Evolve, definitely check out the links in the description to find out what we're all about. Obviously, we're doing this oil painting um, and uh, of the Rings of Power. And if you want skills like these, then check out the Evolve program. We train people how to do this. May was taught by the founder of Evolve, as was I. And a lot of people in here also have been um, taught by Kevin through the Evolve program. There's plenty of links in the description to check out some good content there. Looks like Diana's first time catching a live demo as well. Very cool. Hello, hello. <laughs> Happy to have you. <clears throat> Diana is in block one, assignment 19. Very close to getting to block two. Congratulations. And Rachel Hoffman says hi. She's oh, our <laughs> star on Instagram. She said, hey guys, go May, go. I'm so excited <laughs> to see how this painting comes together. Hello. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> oh, now I'm chilling. Yes, there is there is some Halloween candy here at the at the studio, Becky. But it did not contribute to the to the wild dancing. <laughs> <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a really good weekend, and so I'm kind of still like hung over on like social energy <laughs> if that makes any sense so like I'm still in the mode for like meeting new people and like being out and like surrounded by like 10 20 people at a time and so like it's just me and Daniel so Daniel's getting like all the energy that I would direct at like a room full of like 20 strangers right now <laughs> um, <laughs> and I guess you guys too are also getting that so well I mean it's like tampered down because I have to like focus but it's okay it's a good time <laughs> Yeah. It's good fun. It's very fun. <laughs> I feel like you were like a little like overwhelmed because <laughs> like I haven't been this like energetic in like a long time. <laughs> no, I'm all about it. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um. And then once 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 you tripped on the wire, it was like, okay, it's just go time now. Yeah, <laughs> time yeah. To resolve all the issues that just <laughs> arose out of that. That's good. That's um, good. A gay rocker said, looks like all the lore talk a few weeks ago sparked a ring of interest oh my God. <laughs> very nice <laughs> <laughs> has anybody here seen rings of power i know that it's got uh, overwhelmingly pretty bad reviews at least <laughs> by the critics but i know that a lot of people have still been watching the show mm -hmm. and um i'll say this much that whatever you think of rings of power some of their visuals are pretty, pretty amazing for making some paintings, such as this one. So, it's good content, good visual content. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Suzanne is asking, what size brush are you using? Is it a flat? Uh, yeah, it's it's a three quarter inch, and it's like a little angled, so. Great. And then Levent has chimed in here asking, would she paint me one of these for like 80 bucks? I want one. 80 bucks? A little low. <laughs> but, um, you yeah. can reach out if you're yeah, curious Yeah, you can reach about... out if you're interested. Like I do, you know, obviously I do screen caps from like pretty much like anything. Um, fan art, portraits, illustration. So 
Yeah, yeah, and then your website is um, just my name and then dot com. There's a okay, contact my name dot com, right? <laughs> Definitely. M a y z h e n g. I got it. I got it. Dot com. I'm just saying it for the people. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, I think your Instagram is also Ooh, that's not fun. Somewhere nearby. Yeah. Um, that's Lunic seventy seven. I got it. Yeah, Daniel's a true fan. <laughs> oh, I just have your link on the description. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, you guys got to check out the links in the description. You know, that's where all the good stuff is. Because, <laughs> like, you know, even this live stream, it's like we're going to be doing something pretty cool here. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to get these skills for yourself, then you want to check out the links in the description because that's where we will do some training and stuff like that, all free. And then, of course, we do introduce the Evolve program in those and explain a little bit more of what that's about. If you want to get a Complete comprehensive education. Well, we've got some real fans in here too. And here's, um, cool. <laughs> I just sent in May's Instagram link. Thank you. So, let's see. Diana said, thank you. It's been a learning journey for sure. Didn't know what I didn't know until <laughs> I started this program a year ago. Self-taught for 21 years. Now wow. really getting the nuts and bolts. That's awesome. Cool. Yes, and to see the reference, I have it pretty small right now. And uh, if you give me a moment, I can provide a larger view of that. Edie has not seen The Rings of Power, but read The Lord of the Rings trilogy a few years ago. Nice. <clears throat> and Levant said, yeah, sure, I got it. I want Melkor. I don't know what that is. I think Melkor is a Lord of the Rings but, thing. Yeah, if you send me a reference image, I'll paint it for you. We can talk about it. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Ah, uh, yes, Gay Rocker. Huh. What am I missing? Um, <laughs> so Gay Rocker said, and the colors for the evening are? Oh. I love it. <laughs> we got some got some fans in the house, <laughs> people who are fans of the... He knows the it's a great question. This is the most important question you could be asked all evening, everybody. How do you feel, or sorry, <laughs> how would you describe how you feel using <clears throat> Old Holland oil paint colors? And we've got a little color chart here, which I understand is a little bit hard to see. So if you give me one second, I can send you a link to Old Holland's website. And throw that link up, but it's just fun to hear how people are doing using, you know, describing how you're doing using colors. For me, I've been fearing, feeling very uh, like a russet color, so I'm, I got to look at the chart to see what's what's available for that one. Rusted, you said? Russet. I do not know what that means. It's like a very fall color. Mm. Guessing it's like orangish? Yeah, like a br more like a brownish auburn orange, mm. a burnt orange perhaps. Burnt orange. Whoops. Okay. Okay, so I just dropped in. A link, if you click on that, it'll take you to this color chart, and then you can let us know how you're feeling. Russet is like a potato. Thank you, Aprilene. Aprilene? Aprilene? Let <laughs> me know how I can pronounce your name. Like a potato. So Melkor is the main antagonist of the Silmarillion. Good to know. I have not read the Silmarillion. I do think that The Lord of the Rings is absolutely incredible. I don't know that, I, I can't say I'm a, a huge fan in the sense that I haven't taken upon myself to really enter into the world other than Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. Though when I was a kid, I actually did play what was called Lord of the Rings Strategy Battle Game. <laughs> For those of you who, who know uh, Warhammer 40K, it's like that. Mm. Those little statues 
figurines, and it's like a massive chess battle, except that they go to war against each other. And it was like that, but Lord of the Rings style. And I chose the dwarves as my army of, as my army of choice. Dwarves are pretty, pretty swag. Yeah. <laughs> Melanie is on the last painting of block five. Can't hype up Evolve enough. <laughs> uh, Mark, I'm not familiar with the Hildebrandt Tolkien. Tolkien? Tolkien? Tolkien. Tolkien, thank you. I think. I just always read Tolkien. I, I <laughs> rarely, rarely hear his, his name. That's fair. Okay, from Gay Rocker, we got French Ultramarine Blue. Let's look this up. French ultramarine blue. There's a bunch of ultramarines. I'm seeing a French ultra light extra. Then, but I'm not seeing it, at least on this color chart, I'm not seeing it. But the color that I'm describing for myself would be the transparent oxide yellow lake. Yeah. How about you, May? Um, I like that bright aqua that I put down first. I'm quite pleased with life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Sarah Price said, B127, bright and yummy. Well, now I gotta look that up. Remember in the summer? Oh, wow. or, sorry. <laughs> it's an uh, Indian yellow, yellow orange lake extra. That's happy. It is very orange, and then as it gets lighter, it turns into a brilliant yellow. Mm. I was just thinking, it's like funny because in the summer, I would like, I would do the shadows first and then the lights. Like especially with that first painting I did, like the one with like, like with the wing and like over seven sessions and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I was like actually like, you know, methodical. And now I'm like, no. <laughs> mm. I guess I am, just in a very, very different way. <laughs> yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're doing right now? Um, I am literally just putting down colors, like... Nice. Uh, it's not, obviously it's like not really precise or anything, but I plan to kind of expand the value range from here. Um, so right now I'm kind of putting in like, the general, like, kind of chroma shifts, like, from color to color. Um, and then later I'll, like, work in and put those highlights in and everything. Um, and then create, like, more depth in the shadows and make the clouds, like, kind of three-dimensional. Um, hopefully you won't see too much of the transfer <laughs> by the time I'm done. Mm. Yep, that would, be, that would be great. That would be good, yeah. <laughs> Becky said, cadmium yellow, extra deep. Glenn said, manganese, blue deep. Debbie said, cobalt, blue, turquoise. That's pretty. And then there's some questions coming in. Ooh. So, um, <sighs> Annie <them> Bellinger <laughs> is asking, hi from Canada, just finished block one. Congratulations. Cool. By the way, did I miss the second part of the Red Lady Dragon? No, I have not worked on it since. You're good. Yes, and that's you can blame that on me. <laughs> um, we've been doing a whole bunch of different different things lately. Um, we had tried to get the photo shoot going, which we are planning for next week. So if you guys want to see that live photo shoot happen where Kevin is training you on how to take photos for painting reference, then join us next week. Um, and then I wanted to do this one, this Rings of Power one, um, to do an Ala Prima piece. And then, oh, and then because it was the uh, last week was canceled because Kevin got sick, 
we just had to kind of scramble for something and we ended up doing a uh, oil painting portrait, which I worked on. And so... It's been a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, then we've got a, a landscape that we've been promising people to do. Oh yeah. And actually I, I've been uh, asked by a friend to do a landscape painting. So I have to finalize the commission on that and then I will, I can do that one with you guys. Cool. So yeah, so, you know, in the past we've been doing like the same painting week after week and we're just trying to think of just mixing it up a little bit more with different content, but we still will come back around to the Red Lady Dragon, so do not worry. Don't forget about her. Do not forget. <laughs> okay, and yeah. then... Um, I've been itching to work on it. I like, it's like just sitting here and I'm like, ah! Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> Um, here's a good question from Jane, Jane Neves. Okay. Um, may I ask a question? Why is this art program, why is this art program so expensive? I don't mean to be rude or anything. Yeah, so that's a great question. There is like a sticker shock for a lot of people when they look at our program. And so if you're looking at the program as if it's a, your typical online course program and then compare it to other things or like even if you think that you can get like a full education off of YouTube then you would definitely be surprised by the price and then if you're looking at the education from the point of view of like okay well I really want to get these skills and I want to find a place that's going to deliver the results and so maybe you're thinking atelier or college then you look at that price and you'd say oh my gosh Evolve is incredibly cheap and so where is Evolve positioned really and so um, we, yeah we are positioned in an odd place for people so you know I just want to communicate to you James that like I understand where you're coming from and so for us we've kind of looked at both of those different sides of the coin like you know that seems to be like reference some, points yeah so some people are getting trying to get an education off of YouTube or like these $80 one-off courses which are really to be just perfectly frank they're not really delivering yeah. pro level results um, and it's not to say that they're not helpful, but they're not comprehensive. They're not complete, on most of them. And a lot of them are just these like video lessons, software things that they make once and then they can sell for, uh, for pretty cheap. Whereas for us, we are dedicated to getting results for our students. So our program is actually, though it's online, is much more similar to what you would get out of like a college education. So we give feedback on every single painting assignment and there are uh, 20 paintings in block one, 20 or 10 drawings and 10 paintings in block two, 20 paintings in block three, about 10 paintings in block four. And you're getting feedback on every single one of those. And we also su supply all the art material materials to go with it, um, which is also important to us. So basically what we're, sorry, I'll just back up a second. <laughs> we're thinking about this and we're like, okay, we're not seeing people getting results. Instead, we're seeing people getting stuck. We're seeing people just kind of going from one video tutorial to another video tutorial or trying to learn on free for YouTube from YouTube. And there's a lot of information out there. And it's not that the information is, is bad, but we're seeing students and artists who don't, like they're students, they don't know, they're not masters yet. And then they're looking online for solutions and um, they'll find one thing, it's like, oh wow, this looks cool. And you'll, they'll hear from one person, that this is the most important thing to study, so they go do that for a little bit, and then they hear from someone else, this is the thing that you have to study, and they go do that for a little bit. But there's nothing that's cohesive or comprehensive that's taking them on a singular path. Like, right now in our society, let's just say, um, we, ha we don't have an information problem. Like, we don't have a lack of information problem. We have an overload of information problem. Everything is important. Everything needs to be done this way or that way. And it's like, how do you wade through all of that information and expedite it so that you're getting real results and, and, and being able to completely make your own paintings independently from other people. A self-sufficient artist with real skill who can make their own original works of art. And we just weren't seeing those results coming through. And so we wanted to bring Evolve into existence to really make art accessible and to completely start to reshift what art, educa art education really should be. Um, so yeah, so we're, we take that very seriously for us. Like we don't, we're not even accredited as a program. 
And the reason is, is because we don't think having the accreditation really makes a difference. Like if you have a degree from college that says that you're really good at art, it doesn't mean much. Like people will look at your work and if they like your work, they'll want to buy it. It's not if you have a degree or not. Um, degree, degree could be helpful to teach or something like that, but it's not going to be, it's not a true indication of whether or not you have real skills. So for us, it's the results. And so that's what we focus on. And then, so how can we cut away the things that don't matter and then really focus on the things that do? So again, like I said, that comes with the feedback where we're giving them, so, okay, so let's hold on, let's slow down again. I get really excited about this, guys. So <laughs> imagine that you join the program, you sign up, you spend $2,500 as a one-time payment, or you decide to do the payment plan, it's all the same. You're then we will ship you your first box of art supplies. Why do we send art supplies? Well, we send the art supplies so that we can help ensure results. Because if we're, you know, teaching it to you one way, and then you decide to go off and, you know, get these materials over here, and then suddenly you have to do research on what materials you should get, blah blah blah. And then for us, when we get your work, you'll take a photo of it and submit it online. And we look at it, it's going to be harder for us to know if you're having an issue with your materials or if you're having an issue with your own skill. And it's harder to, for us to give more specific feedback, which is going to be very important and I'll get to in a second. So we send them, we send you guys materials that we know, like the back of our hand, and they are high quality. And it's not that high quality materials make you a better artist, but poor quality materials can seriously hold you back from representing your skill on the canvas, which again is what we need to see as educators in order to give you feedback that's going to move your art forward and move your skill forward. We need to remove the material out of the equation so that we can focus on developing your skills. So we just, we just said, well, we've done all the research. We have a lot of experience with these materials. We'll just provide the materials and of course, because we're buying in bulk for our students, we can get it cheaper and then offer it available to our students at a lower price. Like if you're going to go and get the materials that we send to our students by yourself, you'd be spending over $1,000. Um, so there's that. Where was I? Okay, so you join, you um, get access to our portal, you make your account, the supplies are on their way, they're going to come within about a week's time, and you can start watching the first video lesson. So we have video lessons throughout the course. And those will get you started. The first assignment is really simple where um, you're going to be just filling in some squares. So it's, again, we start at the very bare bones, the very foundations, which is, again, is really important. It's not something that we want to take for granted. It's like how you apply paint to a canvas is one of the most fundamental things that you do constantly. Like that's one of the decisions that May is making even now. And she's probably not even thinking about it um, you know, so she's, you're developing all these good skills. And you do that, so the Michelle's come, you do the assignment, you take a photo of it, you put, submit it to the portal, and then within 24 hours, an instructor will look at it and give you feedback on that work. So it's a 24 hour turnaround. And then the, and so then that feedback is we're letting you know what you're doing well and where you can improve. Both of those things are important to us because you want to reinforce the good habits and um, let you know where you can improve next. And we actually will tend to focus on having you improve one thing at a time because we know like what the list of priorities are. It's like, is this correct? Okay, this is good. All right, so then what's, is there another thing? Okay, well, there is this thing. So we're going to tell you about that one and then have you focus just on that one for the next assignment that you do to make sure that you're improving really quickly. And so it's all laid out. So we've kind of done all of this taking the knowledge and just made it streamlined into one singular path. And um, you can see the results for yourself. Look on YouTube, hashtag Evolve Artist, um, on our Instagram. We've got people who have been recording their whole journey in Evolve and we haven't been sponsoring them, like Mathilda is one. Um, we've got a bunch of students as well who are going through the program right now, like Darkstar and... Um, uh, Lisa and uh, maybe Charnda is doing some as well. And there's someone else. From, oh, uh, Mia's sketchbook. So these are all people who are just recording their experience in the program. Um, 
so yeah, so so yeah, and you just think about like, okay, what is what is our promise? We get people pro level skills in about 350 hours of painting study. That is unheard of at college. So college is if you just take 40 hours a week, which so you're like, imagine that you're a full time student studying about 40 hours a week. College being about a four year program, 14 semesters, it comes out to about 4,300 hours to get, to get a piece of paper that says that you're really good at art for a quarter of a million dollars. The Evolve is 100 times cheaper and 13 times faster. So really difficult to compare Evolve's program to these online art courses that are offering things for free. Because for us, and there's an entire team that's with you making sure that you're getting these results. One of the things that I think is really awesome is when, so if you're, if you're going through the, the assignments and you're struggling with something, you're not really getting someone, so, uh, something, and you're not quite locking it in, maybe you're struggling with uh, your, you know, assigning your values to things, the instructors will begin to notice that you are continuing to struggle in this area, and they'll reach out to you and say, hey, let's, let's book a meeting. Let's talk about this. Let's really get to the bottom of this so that we can then move you forward, which is another thing is the instructors are the ones who move you forward in the program, which is a huge problem with a lot of these online art courses because the online courses will be very subject specific. So they'll think, oh, okay, so if you're interested in portraits, go ahead and learn portraits right now before learning of these other fundamental things that are more important. And then you are going through it self-paced. So you just watch the videos and they might say, okay, go do this thing. You go do that, but there's no feedback. There's no, oh, hey, I saw that you were, you, you saw the information, you got it. But then when you tried to apply it, I saw these issues here. And, but there's none of that in these online art, art courses. And you yourself, the student who by definition you are forgive me for saying this, you are ignorant as a student, right? You are coming to someone with, who has more information and for you to be the curriculum developer of your own art education, it's a little concerning, right? So you would wanna put your trust into to artists who can take you all the way. You don't wanna be with one person for a little while and then be with someone else for a little while unless you have someone who's like a, a higher up expert who's saying, go here and then do this and then do that. Like you don't want to be the self-determiner of your education if you want to learn quickly. If you want to learn quickly, then you've got to find out what the curriculum of your education should be from someone who has already arrived. Um, so anyways, that was just a long, long thing there. Another part of what makes us different is that we really focus on these fundamentals which apply to like all subject matters. Like May has never painted a Balrog before. <laughs> she hasn't studied the anatomy of a Balrog. Um, I don't know what it is at all. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. But she does know values, edges, and color. She's really good at it. Really good at painting values, edges, and color. And so that's it right there. She doesn't need to concern herself learning Balrog anatomy. She can simply interpret the Balrog into values, edges, and color, and then paint the values, edges, and color in a way that makes you believe that you are looking at a Balrog. And that is one of the fastest ways to develop these pro skills. And of course, anatomy is helpful, but if you're a beginner, you don't want to get lost into all this superfluous, or I should say, additional information that is great as a supplement to a foundational education. But the foundational education happens when you're learning like the ABCs of how to communicate visually. And that's what we teach in the fundamentals. So it's not subject specific. It's not even, um, it's kind of, well, it's not really medium specific. We teach in oil paint uh, because the oil paint is a really great way to learn, but the concepts apply really well over into acrylic and watercolor and things like that because we're teaching on things like value, edges, and color, which is always there. And then it's also um, not style specific. So, you know, you probably see a lot of our results are very realistic. We use realism to teach and to educate, 
because realism is the objective standard by which we can measure results. But what we are teaching, again, like, okay, what's the light and shadow, and this thing and that thing, it can be turned into impressionism. It can even be turned into abstract much more easily when you start with um, this fundamental education that we're giving you. And we're not turning you guys into copying machines. We are actually showing you how to not just quote unquote paint what you see, but understand what you see. Filter it and apply it. Break it down and then rebuild it into your own painting. Into something that's even better than the reference that you're working with. Okay, now I'm done. And uh, <laughs> what have people been saying here in the comments? Okay. Um, Edie said, I feel like polished gold. That's cool. Mm. Okay, Mark's excited about Warhammer from my name drop of that earlier. Gumby is asking, do you have a tip to store or save unused paint on your palette so that I can use my next, use it for my next session? Um, you can mix clove oil in it to start. Um, some people are like kind of allergic to that, so I don't know, you have to look that up. Um, and then kind of like DIYs, like you could just cover it with um, like another piece of palette paper, kind of tape it together, prevent the air from leaking in. But, you know, that doesn't, that's not like totally foolproof or anything, so. But yeah, usually I don't do that. So I mix new paint every time I paint. May, is the left side where the yellow stops, is that the end of the painting? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. Sure. And I'm just gonna gently ask, remind you to think about where your head is, yeah. might be positioned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Looking good so far. Is it? I can't tell. <laughs> also, it's funny enough, while I was talking, May just did a little landscape painting. If you guys notice in the back, she gave us some atmospheric depth with those mountains. <laughs> okay. Um, Inadvertently. <laughs> I have a time check. Time check is 743. 43? 43. Oh my god, okay. Yeah, I went on a long rant there. I was like, I thought that was only like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. I guess it was a lot more than that. <laughs> okay. We will make do. Uh, Rachel said, Jason, uh, Rachel said that her husband said that he feels like Chev red light and she feels like the flesh tint because it reminds her of her favorite colored fall trees that she saw in the Blue Ridge Mountains today. Very nice. Cool. Good question from Diana. Is standing better or sitting better when going through the assignments? Um, so. You can answer that one. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, you, it's, the, the difference for the block one to three stuff is pretty, maybe Negligible. pretty, <laughs> like not very different. Um, nominal? Negligible, nominal. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so you can absolutely sit down while you're doing it, but generally speaking, when you're working on a painting, sanding is better simply because it's easier to step back from your work and assess how your painting is going and um, when you're sitting down, it's just a little bit harder to do that, and it's easier to get your face really, really close to the painting. And so, um, yeah, so I recommend standing in general. But you're totally fine for those. Those exercises are pretty straightforward, and we're having you, the process that we're giving you is very structural, and it holds a strong impression, and so it's absolutely fine to sit down. You want to make sure that you're comfortable. You want to make sure you're having a good time when you're painting, you know. Awesome. Levent sent you a sample. Me? Oh, cool. Yeah. 
Thanks. Looking forward to figuring that out. <laughs> All right. Big brush time. Ah. Oh well. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they saw that or anything. I'm sorry. Here's um, a great question yeah. from uh, Rhesus, Rhesus, Apex. Okay. Let's call this person Apex. Okay. What's the best way to cover up drawing lines with paint? Are some colors really transparent and make that more difficult? Um, there's definitely like varying transparencies across the colors, um, even if they're all like opaque paint, like in the same set. Um, just don't thin your paint down and don't like bear into the board or whatever you're working on. Um, and usually, like if you like see like this took like a, a couple layers to kind of get rid of the lines, and you can still see some of them there. I'm gonna work into it more later. Don't don't worry. Um, but yeah, I think generally, um, just as long as you don't thin the paint down too much, and as long as you're not like biting into the board or canvas or whatever, you'll be fine. Look at that. That's crazy. All right. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks. I'm really enjoying how bright these colors are. <laughs> Eleven, to answer your question, the, this painting is going to take a maximum of four hours. Yeah, I mean, I might, I might like finesse it more later, but probably not. <laughs> kind of want to see what I'm able to do in four hours as well. And um, Kevin is, I think he wasn't doing too hot earlier this week, but I think he's, he's recovery. on the recovery. Yeah. yeah. He's had a tiring weekend, so that's not helping. <laughs> um, he's also working out very hard, so that's also not helping. But what can you do? I do the same thing when I'm sick. I don't care. <laughs> Anything for the gains. All right. And uh, Gay Rocker chimed in to my earlier rant about Evolve, <laughs> um, saying it's really hard to know where to go or who to listen to. And yeah, definitely. Um, and one thing I would just say is look, look at the results of what the education, like look at the student results. And um, yeah. Like that should be the primary determinant of what kind of education you would be getting when you're looking at an education and looking for somebody to really trust. But I would definitely recommend that whoever you do go with to stick with them until that you know, course is done. And uh, try not to muddy the waters by um, doing you know, multiple people and just confusing things. And then um, Gay Rocker also said, there's nothing like in person. Yeah, there's definitely an element to the person that is, you can't uh, fully replicate it online. We do our best to replicate it. We have one-on-one um, -on -one meetings that are available to all of our students, as well as live classes. And we actually do like video chat rooms where students can paint together. So it, it's not, no, it's not in person. And there's definitely a quality to in person. But we do do our best to make it to make the education accessible to people from all different parts of the world. And I think we're in... 53 or 51, I forget. Oh, nice. Countries. <laughs> yeah, I think on the Evolve website, there's like a whole map of like all the countries that we're in. It's pretty cool. Thank you, Annie. Appreciate your compliment there. Okay, Mindy asking me to go a bit wider so we can see the image she is painting. Yeah, so I, I need to pull up the uh, a better reference for you all, something a little bit bigger. So give me one second here. Now I'm going to be doing this live edit live, so bear with me.
Oh, like the scaling of the feeds and whatnot? Yeah, I'm just going to drop in this, this reference here. Cool, cool, cool. So there you have the larger scale reference image. Uh, Eric has chimed in. He's, he said, ah, I made it. So much <laughs> going on today with family. Faded green, super faded, happy green. Aww. Still putting things away. I'll be in and out tonight. Glad Ooh. to have you, Eric. Eric brings a, a certain color to our live streams, <laughs> wouldn't you say, May? I would. I would definitely agree. <laughs> Okay, so I did not compose this reference. This is a screen capture from Rings of Power, episode five. Question from Jeff Allen. What will the subject matter be for the photo shoot demo next week? That's a great question. I don't know the answer. <laughs> it might be one of us. True. I think uh, it might be me. Maybe. You're certainly prettier than I am, so. <laughs> they have that would make sense. You guys should vote. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it'll be me. <laughs> Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think and we're actually going to have a full-time student hopefully joining us. Oh, um, Kara. Kara. Cool. She's actually chimed into a few of these live streams. She's been doing awesome work. She's and cool. um, I should grab her Instagram and stuff and share it next time she's popping in. Um, i got to get that information from her. But she's doing great work in the full-time program under Kevin here. And... We're going to kill two birds with one stone by showing, or by Kevin teaching her. So Kevin will teach her how to use the camera and everything, and then we will be live streaming that. So who knows, maybe May and I will be tag teaming the, the live stream assistant role. Mayhaps. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to figure out with the mic situation for that, mm -hmm. since there's going to be four voices. But it'll be good. Uh oh, we're getting a scam. I am blocking you now. Love that. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, it's not letting me block you. Oh, okay, thank you, Becky. That's such a gross color. <laughs> hiding, hiding them from our channel. Okay. It's funny because I'm kind of doing like a first pass and then like just painting directly on top of it. Um, like the whole like speed painting average color thing. Um, and then like I'm just immediately painting on top of it because usually in speed painting you would wait for it to dry and whatnot. But... Mm -hmm. but I'm kind of just like working into it. It's kind of fun.
question from Edie. What kind of varnish do you use on your oil paintings? We use Kmar. Yeah. Uh, wait, Krylons, Kmar, spray varnish. Dina is asking me, is there any way to have closed captions on future reference YouTubes for those who want to watch with the sound off? So the closed captions don't happen automatically during the live stream itself, but if you give YouTube enough time after the live stream has been finished and recorded and still posted up on YouTube, then they should have auto captions. Right. But um, we're not able to, you know, these are like three hour, four hour live streams and we're not able to like go through and like yeah, go through and turn these say. into official closed captions. Though the other YouTube videos that we make that are all pre-recorded do have um, those captions. Okay, take care, Mark. Bye. I'm still catching up from the chat from my previous one. <laughs> Very good. Ooh. Ew. That's fine. <laughs> What's the matter? My brush was contaminated because I'm silly. It's okay though. Yeah, Reese is a good point. Or sorry, Apex. Mm-hmm. We have an observant one in our live stream. <laughs> Becky said, oh, is there a new portrait in the background? The guy is finished? The guy's been finished for like six months, but um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's one I'm working on. I hope to finish it by the end of the You can step week. forward just a little bit. Uh, sorry, towards your painting? Yeah. Yeah. Now we can see the portrait back there. Yeah. Um, hope to finish it by the end of next week. So next live stream, she may be sitting completed in the background, so. Yeah, I thought it was time to do a little swap. Because <laughs> why not? I've been like, I did the photo shoot for her like over the summer, so it's really been a while, but I've just been like really busy with other paintings, so I'm really looking forward to finally finishing this one. <laughs> What? What? Um, <laughs> Gay Rocker said, A Balrog is a powerful, fictional, demonic monster in J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth. Mm -hmm. It's called Inflation. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So, what did you guys dress up for for Halloween? <laughs> Let us know.
Oh. <laughs> Gay Rocker's inflation comment was not related to the Balrog. Oh. I still thought it was funny, though. It will get better, I promise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, this is nice and unclean. Perfect for wiping things away. <laughs> uh, nice. Eric said he doesn't really celebrate Halloween. I respect that. Becky said, our area celebrates tomorrow. I'll be dressing up as a woman hiding from trick-or-treaters. <laughs> Watching them from my window as they take candy from the table. Oh, man. I dressed up as a disciple, like a, a biblical disciple, because I didn't want to spend any money that on way. anything, and there was a dress-up event, and I had all this costume stuff for my models for the oh, that's painting that I'm working on. <laughs> So I just figured I would just take those rags and throw a bandana on and take some rope and wrap it around my arms. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Put some flip-flops on and I was good. I'm all about those easy, easy dress-ups. Mm -hmm. That was Jinx from Arcane, who I've actually painted on live stream. So. <laughs> it was a fun costume. I still have like the, the hair in because I think it's cute. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was fun. Hey, Darkstar. Hello. May, are you familiar with the phrase, you shall not pass? Yes, very familiar. <laughs> it's a common trope in academic memes. You know where it comes from? Yeah, it's like when Gandalf is like, on that bridge, and he's like, you shall not pass, and I'm pretty sure, like, he passes, but it's okay. Does he? Who passes? This big dude who doesn't talk and is, like, made of fire. Huh. Is there a name for that? Is it actually a Balrog? Yeah. Actually? Oh, that's yeah. sick. I was like, wait, it does have horns. <laughs> I'm gonna go out on a limb. <laughs> that's funny. That was very enjoyable. <laughs> And here we wow. have Mei Jung painting a Balrog, and she has no idea. Make Mei look silly. <laughs> yes. You conspired against me. <laughs> it's okay. No, Mei, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to educate you, dog. <laughs> what is this? What just happened? Get off my brush. Oh my god. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Have you seen the movies? I have seen the movies. I think they're pretty great. I watched them when I was like younger though, so I feel like I didn't fully appreciate them. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I like, I was very into, into it because there was like fighting and everyone had really cool outfits and they all fought differently. And there was this dude called Legolas and I thought <laughs> it was like the best thing ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, he's like not even in the books, right? Like they just made him up. Uh, I think there's like a lot less of him. I think there's a lot less of him, um, even if he is in the books. And like, yeah. Can you watch your head? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Slide to the left. But yeah, I appreciate it very much. I tried to read the original books. Um, at some point in high school, because I was like, you know, this would be like a good thing to say. I like actually read. And I did not have the attention span for it, but it's okay. Good I channel. think I read them, but I must have just binged them because I hardly remember <laughs> reading or retaining any of the information. But I do remember reading the part about um, 
when Rohan shows up in the third movie on the, that great big hill mm -hmm. and they come mm -hmm. riding in. And uh, I just remember reading that and just being just so blown away. They're pretty cool for that one. <laughs> I just know that like, like Tolkien actually made like an entire language. Like, are there like multiple parts, like Elvish multiple. and like Dwarvish and like yep. everything. That's like real, like that was so cool. There's this one girl in like my middle school class who like actually like learned them and she would like raise her hand in class and like respond to the teacher's questions and like Elvish. <laughs> it was like always like a kind of a scene. It was funny. <laughs> That green is very green. It's so green, dude. I bet Eric is very happy to see that. This is all for you, Eric. This is like a lot greener than the ref No, I'm kidding. It's like actually that green, but... <laughs> I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it doesn't end up too Christmassy because it's all like red. But I mean, a lot of the red that I have in right now is going to be turned into like orange and... You see green in the, yellow. In the hill there? Yeah, like The printed. digital image is giving me blue. Oh, really? It's printed like really green for me. Mm. Or plot twist, I'm colorblind. Be <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I think it's like the opposite colors. It's like red and red and green are usually mixed up, right? And um, and yellow. What's that? Like for colorblindness, usually it's like one defective cone, and um, they're like paired because it's like opponent process theory. So like every cone is responsible for either like um, blue, uh, blue and yellow and or like red and green. And then there's like black and white for the rods. Um, and like if you're colorblind, it's like usually like one of those is defective, either red and green or blue and yellow. Hmm. Just me and my cognitive science studies. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. I guess, yeah. I learned it last year. See, I like going to college, guys. I can sound smart sometimes. <laughs> um. no, but, like, lately I've actually been, like, just feeling better about this whole, like, full-time student, full-time artist thing. Like, last week and, like, the two weeks before that, it was just kind of building up like this overall like angst of like, why do I have to do this? Why do I have to split my time? It's ridiculous. But um, mm. I like being able to be in like both places, I think. It's more like trying to think of it more as like, I'm able to be in both places more than, rather than like, I have to be in both places. And that like helps a lot. Mm. Very interested about this green that you're putting everywhere. Is it not in the reference? It's like all I see no. everywhere, dog. Oh, well. Unless I'm colorblind. Help me out, people. Don't look at <laughs> Um, I see blue. Really? Looking at this, yeah. I mean, my light is very different from where you are, so... I don't know if that changes things. Interesting. You think all this is blue, like this stuff? Yeah. Really? I recommend, I think regardless. I should probably make it blue. I right? recommend you make it blue. Yeah, otherwise the blending will be really ugly. Uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> this is why I almost broke a wire. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff that we do, but it's just the two of us. Yeah. We have to, you know, try to censor ourselves. Yeah, we have to be like all civil and stuff. It's like boring. <laughs> uh... Yeah, you're right. Blue would probably look a lot better. But okay, we're figuring it out. Wait, hold on. So now Apex is recommending that I take a quick colorblind test? <laughs> what do you guys think? Blue or green? Let us know. Oh my God. Is the hill blue or green? 
I mean, it probably shows it differently, like, on camera and everything. Yeah. And, like, off the computer, so it's, like, not really useful. Maybe right. Not. Sorry, guys. I mean, <laughs> it's a given that <laughs> it's in the gray family. But yeah. then which, you know, which gray does it lean towards? Becky is seeing blue. I mean, Eric is loving this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> green. He said, I was just talking to my color about this green. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, Apex in the reference photo. Oh, yeah. I guess people didn't see. When I was looking, when I was making a judgment call on what I saw, I was looking at the reference photo. Like the actual, like. That, yeah, that May handed me. Up here. <laughs> I'm just saying things. I'm gonna recenter this camera a little bit. Yeah. So what song is stuck in your head? I have like six. Six? <laughs> it's kind of bad. <laughs> How do you function? I... Does it look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, that's crazy. Speaking of which, it is 8.13. 13? That's not bad. I need to not talk with this in my mouth. What color does that make you feel? <laughs> uh, this one. Probably. <laughs> um, okay, switching bit, over to red, I see. A little bit frantic. Yeah, that's like not... Okay, it sounds stupid with this in my mouth. Um, that's like not what I'm seeing in the reference, but I think it'll look better overall if it's like... not as like violently green. Sorry, Eric. We're gonna have to make some sacrifices for the greater good. I promise it'll turn out perfect. Well, okay, not perfect, but like... No, they will be green. <laughs> that was like a prophecy. <laughs> they will be green. Mm, ah. What is this? What am I looking at? I actually don't know the name of the of like one of the songs stuck in my head. It's really frustrating because I want to listen to it, but like, I just know the tune. Um, I think that's a very common thing these days, though. <laughs> Eric said, it's all good. Can't have sweets all the time, yeah? Sometimes, probably a lot of times, you need those veggies. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you should commission, like, a green painting. Just, like, some subject, and I just paint it in, like, monochrome green. Watch your head. <laughs> not the, not the sounds. <laughs> we were talking about this before. <laughs> uh, Becky asked me, do I ever use a color matcher as in data on references? Um, yes, it's only so helpful though. So I'm assuming you're talking about if I have a digital screen as a reference and then I maybe it's on Photoshop and I use the eyedropper tool. Is that what you're saying? I have done that every once in a while. It's only so helpful. Um, it can help me just quickly understand what ballpark the color is in, but as far as matching the, the color that I really need for the painting, it tends to be unnecessary. Like, you have to look at the color in relationship to other things. At least, well, you know, for the work that I'm doing where I'm, like, I'll have, I'll have my reference, but the ref reference is just a departure point for me uh, for the kind of work that I'm doing, where I'm inventing the painting from very little. Eric said, commissioning paintings from artists I enjoy? That's actually a great idea. Huh. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. I am 
ready at your service. <laughs> Also, Christmas is coming up. Christmas is coming up. You want a gift? You want to give gifts? Pink things are a great idea. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think we talked about that where I think I was sharing how my brother is a really good gift giver. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for Christmas, he I like put all this work into this handmade thing, <laughs> this creative thing. Yeah. And I was so excited for my parents to see it, so I gave it to them. And then my brother... No. Gives them this college photo of him in his military uniform. Aww. And my parents just melted seeing that. And he spent like 15 bucks, you know, yeah. just to like acquire this photo. Right. That was mandatory for him to, you know, get a photo of him. Right, right. But it was so precious. Mm -hmm. And um, you would think that it's like... A little egotistical to give somebody a portrait of yourself mm. but my brother understood what his parents cared about yeah and it was their favorite Christmas gift <laughs> yeah like for my mom's birthday which was recently I like gave her a digital painting I like printed it on like really nice matte paper um like of herself when she was like eight or nine and like it's that age where like people say that like we look like really similar um, and she's like reading a book and it's very cute. We mm. framed it and everything, so she was very pleased. <laughs> mm. That's cool. Yeah. I showed you, right? Yeah, you showed me the digital. Yeah. It was so cute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, I had a picture of like the photograph, but it was like in totally like in grayscale and it was like a little bit grainy. But I kind of wanted to capture that like out of focus like feel. It's almost like a little bit ethereal. Nice. Eric said it's going to be for me though and I'm just going to stare at it and wonder how you did it <laughs> oil is so different from what I do oh Eric paints with the inks that's pretty sick the supplies always look so cool I get them like recommended in Amazon like all the time um hmm. It's just like so much metal and like black ink and like different colors of ink. I don't know. It's like very like dark academia aesthetic to me. <laughs> I just think it looks really cool. I know nothing. Great question from Edie. Yeah. How do you keep the colors from blending into gray mud when painting wet and wet? Are they not blending into gray mud? <laughs> um, I think like density of paint matters. Like if your paint's dense enough on the brush when you put it down, it'll just like cover. Um, but like if you like push it around, like you'll be kind of pushing the paint into what's underneath. Um, so there's like a very simple, but like very delicate, like physical dimension to it. I think it's like happening to me, which is like honestly fine because there is like a lot of gray kind of muddy stuff in the transitions. It's like a very like earthy environment and there's like a lot of smoke, it's like dirt. And so you're like, under a time crunch. Yes. So there's a lot of factors that are not helping May out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you want to do the work on the palette and you want to mix you can mix admixtures um, on your palette to, to be able to, so you can see the colors like transition from one thing to another and to do it in a way that's nice and rich. If you take two uh, paints that are very different from each other, so there's, there's two ways for the paint to be different. One is value and the other one is color. So you could, you could mix, like let's say that you have a, um, you're going from red to blue. So you could go, well, and, and let's say that the that the red is brighter than the blue. So as you are mixing, let's say that you have to mix some colors in between to like stepping stones to get there. Then 
Um, you can have in the middle, when you're doing your mixtures, in the middle you could have two colors that are the exact same value, let's say. So let's say that there's like a, a darker red and then next to it is a, is a blue and those, that blue and that red, that, they're getting closer to each other so they might be getting more purple or something um, if you want to have a nice transition there. But the one is leaning more red and it was leaning more blue but they're the same value. And so that's going to help those colors really just mix into each other more naturally. And then um, what you do, and we, we teach people how to make gradients in one of our first, or in our second exercise. We do it in grayscale first, but it's the same process where we have these two values go down, and then we put a, an admixture buffer down to go in between. And then we then paint, then we have another admixture between those buffers, and but you're always applying paint. You don't put the paint next to each other and then just start smushing them around and hope that they blend together. If you do that, you're going to get your gray. But if you're constantly adding more paint and adding in those mixtures that you made on the palette, then you will get a very nice, rich, luscious gradient without any of that contamination. And the transition will just be so beautiful and butter smooth. Yeah, not happening for me right now, but it's okay. <laughs> Eric said, after I staple a few nickels together, May and Daniel, I might commission a work, though that kind of thing does intrigue me. Sick. Looking forward to it. And no Eric pressure, though. <laughs> is into moody art, which is why he loves black and white art, very dramatic. But color is what I'm working towards. I see the power it holds. I love moody art. <laughs> I have all this <laughs> angst that you can see. <laughs> um, it's really cool to see the painting from this side view because you can really start to see the tree and the Balrog appear. Really? But then looking at it head on, it's like harder to tell what's going on. I agree with the second bit. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. Aprilin asked, Would trans wouldn't transparent and opaque be another difference? Yes. Interestingly enough, so I faced this problem on Thursday and it was very frustrating. So the painting that I'm working on this commission, I've said many times, it's very blue. <laughs> and um, in order to make it as blue as I did, it is mostly a transparent blue that I'm painting as if it's opaque. And the, and then I'm got to transition that blue into like a yellowy orange. And so I use red to go in between when then the red between the blue has to be more on the relative magenta side. Well, because the both, so because everything is so colorful, the, um, the transparent blue is then getting mixed into like a transparent red. And what was happening is even, the, even on the palette itself, when I started to create those little uh, mixtures together on the palette to create like a nice luscious gradient, the value in between in those, those admixtures, they, the value kept dropping. It became more, it became darker, more like black. And I kept trying different, different things, like I, maybe I make the, the purple transition like even more purple and Maybe I try to go up a value to compensate for the darkening that might happen as I'm softening my edge. And it's just like nothing was working. It was very frustrating. And, um, but I believe this would be my attempt at explaining it scientifically. Because it's a transparent, it's, it's all in how the light is interacting with it. So with like paint that's very opaque, the light hits it and just like bounces off. And it, it feels very... Uh, I don't know, like it just, it just bounces straight off. It's very clear what it is. Whereas um, with the transparent paint, the light sort of enters into that paint and it swims around in there a little bit. It's, it's kind of like going inside. It's like that translucent. And then it starts to kind of collect the, the color that's in there and then bounces back out with the color. So there's sort of like this vibrating feel to it compared to the more opaque paint that would just bounce right back. And what it's doing is that in that transparent paint, the light, the light waves are being 
all the light waves are being absorbed except for whatever color it's bouncing back. So in the case of my blue transparent, it's absorbing the red waves, it's absorbing the yellow, and it's just letting the blue one go back into your eyes. So if you add just a little bit, just a small amount of a transparent red into that transparent blue, then your, the transparent red is absorbing all the wavelengths except for the red. But when you start to add them together, it's just going to be absorbing everything. There's nothing left for it to absorb, and so it becomes black. And I think that's the, sort of the most scientific explanation I can give it of what's going on. And so in some of my gradients between things, it actually gets a little bit darker, and I haven't figured out how to fully resolve that problem. It's very subtle, um, but I might have to work in a second layer. Um, like, I don't know if it could be fully resolved at the level of chroma that I'm using. Normally, I'm not working in such a high chroma, like everything is so highly saturated. So anyways, I've just been pondering that for a few days and how I might be able to resolve it in a second pass. I think in, a, in another pass, like, I can be a little bit, I can kind of control a little bit more. Like, e even if I took a glaze and slowly glazed my way up to that darker rim where the gradient, where that, that value kind of gets a little bit darker before it transitions, if I can darken that, and then as I get close to that darkened rim, darkened rim, I can gently fade off and so basically just darken all the values of the blue in that area. That would work or I could try going opaquely in my lights and then without touching the blue and then spread over into that and compensate that way. Um, maybe a combination of both of those things. I don't know if that made sense at all, but I like followed half of it yeah. and then I was like, I need to know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. Whatever is going on. It's definitely just been a new, a new battle for me that I haven't had to deal with before. Every time this happens going forward though, you'll know what to do. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully, yeah. Oh, I think so. Or at least you'll know what not to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Eric said it made sense. That's awesome. And Dina said, Daniel, I have some art on display that one of my sons created and gave me from elementary school. A frame posted of a pink flamingo that was chosen for an art show at a bank and a clay sculpture. Cool. Cute. Yeah, it's really fun to have art from, from people that you know. I think I've said that before, but I've been collecting <laughs> my artist friend's work. For me, like if I, can, if I can just somehow acquire just like one of their pieces, it's sort of just like a nice way to remember them. Yeah. Um, but I had to... It was worth it to pay a little bit more to get to get Maze <laughs> Fallen Angel painting. Yeah, I worked on it a little bit extra after the stream, so it would be like really nice. Yeah, it's in my living room. <laughs> no one has asked me yet, why is there a fallen angel painting in your living room? No one's noticed it yet. Oh, I'm sure they have, but they just haven't like like they haven't thought started about a conversation it. about it. <laughs> Well, they haven't, like, you know, I don't know, some people might just feel weirded out that there's a fallen angel, you know? Because wow. we've got, like, some paintings of, like, a, like a couple of prints of, like, a, a bison, Edwin Landseer's Monarch of the Glen. I have a, a painting that Piper gave me mm -hmm. of a barn. Piper is the head instructor of Evolve, and that one's also in the living room. And then there's just this fallen angel. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, nature, calm. This fallen guy is crying. I'm glad that's my mm. legacy. I'm the deviant in the, 
in the household <laughs> living room. Yeah, I mean, if you, like, you just had like other fallen angels in there, I'd be like a little bit like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be special. <laughs> the guys I live with are Catholic, and they have a like a cool um, like a I don't know like a do they call it sacred art of like a the Archangel Michael? Mm. So that's cool. That kind of fits the theme. Nice. And it's like on a shelf in the same living room. Archangel Squad. <laughs> Is this, the, is this the brush? Yes, very good. Hey, Laurel. Glad to have you. Hello. So you can see I'm holding two of the same size brush. I'm just using one for shadows and like darker values, and the other one for lighter ones, so I don't like an insane contamination. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which, to answer your question, Edie, that also helps a lot. Yeah. It's much better to spend some extra time washing extra brushes and just to spend extra time like repainting and painting and painting because you have contamination because you were lazy. Yeah. And you can never fully get it out when it's contaminated like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a, I was painting the, the stormy waters in the painting on Thursday. And um, I was all pretty much in the blue families. I did a little bit of red here and there, and it took me an hour oh my gosh. <laughs> to finish cleaning my brushes. Wow. I had basically one brush for every subtle value shift that I had. Because, you know, this is like a large swath, and I right. really wanted to make sure that my values were going to, um, you know, stay what they were. Mm -hmm. Because you could have contamination, not from color, but also value. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, like I just pulled from this, this paint pile, but I keep getting that this value looks the same as the other one. It's like, well, because they could be contaminated. Ooh, that hit of blue. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's just like a break in the smoke. So that is actually the Balrog's wing. <gasps> That's so cool. All right. So it's it's That's only sick. it only it's only blue because of the lightning. Oh. Um, in the in the scene when this like this capture, it's actually it's like black, and then when the lightning strikes, mm -hmm. it like lights up a little bit blue. That's sick. Thank you for telling me that. You're welcome. I will feverishly make it more blue then. Well, as you can see me on my palette. <laughs> There's like a. I would edge focus thing. more on like, you know, making it more like fitting a wing, yeah. as opposed to making it. Yeah, but I just wanted to like stand out then. I know it's a wing. I want people to like see it. <laughs> May didn't realize that she was painting a wing after all today. I'm so pleased. Her favorite. I'm so pleased. <clears throat> you gotta make sure you're painting what you enjoy, May. I mean, come on. So true. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Daniel Fulto for knowing who I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got you. Green. It was green and it's like ugly, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that means wait, I wanna I wanna do something audacious and silly. Gay Rocker said so, May. So. Yes. The painting is coming along quite exquisitely. Thanks. <laughs> but I can't, for the life of me, locate Dumbledore. That's a good question. You With... tell me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong fandom. How come, eh? Why? Because it's, it's... He's not in the show. Where does Dumbledore come from? Harry Potter. <laughs> ah. What do you think I am? Come on. <laughs> Hey, if we could tease you for being a little bit... Uh, uncultured. Uncultured. Because I'm, like, busy. <laughs> An uncultured swine. <laughs> Yo, chill. Yo, chill. Oh, this is also the wing then, right? This thing. Sorry, that's just a, a fun little... I hope that's not... Uh... You just ruined my... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I made of stronger stuff. Imagine if I did care. That'd be so sad. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. What is this? There is so much color going on. I'm like, this is enjoyable. May likes color. I do like color. It's like a little insane, but I like it. Give us a shot of the reference again. Do you see the other wing now? Yeah, I okay. think I'm putting it in. So there's two of them. That's awesome. Good for him. There actually might be more than two of them. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. To find them then. I'm Side to quest. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything else. So. Oh, is this also? Yo! <laughs> That's like not as blue in the reference, but if it's like a wing, then I'm a, I'm a bring it out. You know what I'm saying? Okay. According to Quora, Balrogs do not have wings, but okay. But hold <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> uh, apparently, this is a quote. His enemy halted again, facing him, and the shadow about it reached out like two vast wings. That's awesome. And so ever since then, there's been wings like everywhere in That's the Balrog desert. Awesome. So, I guess the Balrog doesn't actually fly. Yeah, they're just for like visual effect. I, I approve. <laughs> oh. What? Is that not true? I mean, that's like just what I concluded. Oh, uh, no, sorry. I, was, I read it chat. Oh. What? Uh, Gay Rocker was explaining it was a running joke that Dumbledore and Gandalf are the same person. Oh. Yeah. But in this scene, it's somebody else. I forget his name. It's. I don't know. I like. He looks like a. He looks it's like so a elf. chess piece down here. Yeah. <laughs> He's tiny. Oh wow! Okay, I found this site called Tolk. Tolkien Gateway, mm. and there's arguments for Balrog wings, and there's arguments against Balrog wings. I love wings. that there are people out there in the world who like spend time to like write arguments for and against Balrog wings. Okay. Good for them. The most common reference for winged Balrogs is the vast wings language in the Bridge of Khazad Doom. The plain language here explicitly refers to wings. Another Tolkien reference may be taken as evidence of Balrog wings. Swiftly they arose, and they passed with winged, 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 I don't know. winged speed over Hithlam, and they came to Lamoth as a tempest of fire. This is either a metaphor for moving very quickly or a literal reference to physical wings. It is this issue over the verb to fly, which is mostly at the heart of the Balrog debate. The Another oft-quoted example debate. from the appendices, thus they roused from sleep a thing of terror, that flying from Thangorodrim yes. had lain hidden at the foundations of the earth since the coming of the host of the west, a Balrog of Morgoth. I like the voice change you did there. Thank you. I had to. I couldn't help it. <laughs> I don't like this brush. Yeah. Good night. Oh. <laughs> And now, the arguments against Balrog wings. BRB. Okay. Grabbing a brush. I'm going to turn off your mic. Okay, turn it back on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. <clears throat> arguments against Balrog wings. On the other hand, the explicit reference to wings of shadow... Hold on. On. Oh, wait, okay. I have to read the introduction of this essay. Okay. The two references in the initial chapter said, His enemy halted again, facing him, and the shadow about it reached out like two vast wings, and then suddenly it drew itself up to a great height, and its wings were spread from wall to wall. 
Sounds like wings to me. Um, Tolkien's language leaves some room for speculation. The first quote seems to describe a Balrog covered in shadow that appears wing-like and is later spread. However, the second quoted passage seems to indicate that this Balrog had actual wings that were spread from wall to wall. Word. Okay. Back to arguments against the wings. On the other hand, the explicit reference to wings of shadow leaves open the interpretation that Balrogs had no physical wings. Balrogs were never exactly described as flying in any of Tolkien's works, including the winged speed language quoted above. Furthermore, at least two Balrogs fell to their ruin, apparently wingless. Mm. Many are the songs... This is a quote. Many are the songs that have been sung of the duel of Glorfindel with the Balrog upon a pinnacle of rock in that high place, and both fell to ruin in the abyss. I wonder if Glorfindel is the guy that you're going to be painting. Maybe. Um, and then another one, I threw down my enemy and he fell from the high place and broke the mountainside, or he smote it and it was ruin. <laughs> Sorry, that was Gandalf. That was good. Um, well, I'm not taking that blue out, so it doesn't really matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Some think the strongest objection is the simplest, that taking references like the second statement seriously mean that all lines must be taken literally. For example, shortly before the Balrog's appearance, quote-unquote, Gandalf came flying down the steps and fell to the ground in the midst of the company. Oh, I see. It's like, oh, if we let this one slide, then like everything else is like also going to slide. That's fair. But it doesn't change what I'm doing. Uh, I guess, Becky, this is from that story being told in the recap. So this scene is not, it's, they're describing something that happened in the past and it's not something that happens in the very present moment of the show itself. May is becoming a Balrog expert. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, that's blue. That's also blue, question mark. Oh, well. Yes, I'm pretty positive it was an elf. What was an elf? The guy with the shield. Uh-oh, yeah. And the lightning did something to the tree. Something having to do with Mithril. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Gay Rocker has pop quiz. I don't know. Please do not hold my lack of knowledge about this subject against me. <laughs> <laughs> We could do, um, ooh, oh, what? let me look this up. Lord of the Rings trivia questions. Oh my God. None of these will be directed at me, okay? <laughs> okay, we got some easy ones in here. Let's see, are there gonna be any difficult ones? Okay. 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 All right. So this is going to start off easy and seem to get a little bit more complex. So for those of you who are the serious, avid uh, fans, maybe hold off just a few moments to let other people guess. Here we go. First question. Who is, or I guess, how does this, all right. He, he, it says he is, he is, Wait a minute. He is waiting a minute. Okay, nobody looked this up online, okay? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just got this from the internet. 
He is Frodo's loyal friend who journeyed with him from Middle Earth to Mount Doom. That's not who happening. is it? Let us know. Who journeyed with Frodo from Middle Earth to Mount Doom? This, this is about one person. One entity. We got an answer from Becky. Okay. Okay. We, yes, the answer is Samwise Gamgee. We got one answer. I don't know how wild people are about answering these questions. <laughs> no! Don't do that. Stop. What happens when this Jesus when this table is so crowded? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cope. <All right. laughs> what? Got some funny answers. Uh, Patrick said Rudy, which is a reference to another movie. Patrick Bateman. That would be terrifying. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try a harder one. Who did Sam eventually marry? First and last name, go. Becky just asked me, did I know he was a Goonie? Uh, I don't know what a Goonie is. Also, watch your head. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Becky has guessed Rose Chatwater. <laughs> Not quite. You got both of them wrong. <laughs> um, one of them is close. And it's not chat water. <laughs> chat water. And the answer is, drum roll. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Rosie Cotton. Dear Rosie. What is the time? The time is 8.50. What the heck? That's not bad, actually. Everything's covered, so now you just get to, like, mess with what's down. Everything's covered? I'm just gonna, like, be working into it, you know? <laughs> don't, don't look at me. I, I, I see a couple spots that look awfully I like bright. a little bit, yeah. Oh, okay. But, like, all the components are in place. Yeah, this should. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Gay Rocker, know. help me out here. Thank you. Gay Rocker said The Goonies was a movie in which Sean Aston Frodo. Frodo? Wait, no. Huh? Sean Aston was Samwise Gamgee. Played a part in mid 80s before my time. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> That's okay. <clears throat> I think you're doing you're doing well. You're at a good pace. Thanks. I think about it. I've given you four hours max. Yeah. 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 How you feeling? I like don't know what it's like gonna end up looking like. 
So I don't really have a destination. I kind of just wanted to look like the reference, kind of. But it's like I don't have a good understanding of the reference either. So I, you know. So there's a burning tree. Yeah. There's this. Yeah, but it's like, it's like very, there's like smoke and there's like wings and there's like a tree and there's like fire and it's like, um, and they're all like overlapping. So like I could get away with like a lot of impressionism because. Do it. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know if I, I don't know if that's like the best way or whatever. So. Well, I think your colors are spot on. I think it's just getting okay. your values to capture the overall impression. Yeah, like just rendering. Yeah, like trying to make the forms come out more as well. Just the relative colors and everything. It's like confused. <laughs> I mean, there's just like a lot going on, so um, yeah, it's fine. No worries, Gay Rocker, totally understand. Gay Rocker's been working 12 hour shifts I do think you can afford to go darker in your mid-tones on the Balrog side. Yeah. Because the <clears throat> the general, you know, I, I can kind of see, I get to see the reference super small. Mm -hmm. But the general scheme is like everything is light on the left side and then, and then you have light shining from the left side diagonally down onto the right side. So even the tree itself has like that kind of form explanation going on. It's even in the clouds that you're painting now. Right. <laughs> There's so much going on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty complex. And it's not easy when you have the fire itself as its own light source. I'm not even thinking like what things are. I'm just like color, please. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm simply decomposing. Uh... Value trumps color every time. Yeah. You know, objectively. Yeah. From a technical standpoint. Got to just, you know, insert that in here. Because <laughs> technical is not always... Not always what people are going for. May, if you could be any character from Lord of the Rings, who would you be? Legolas. <laughs> so fast. Duh. <laughs> He's so cool, and his hair is so pretty. And he doesn't die. I'm pretty sure he doesn't die. 
If he does die, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I'm just gonna live in happy bliss and believe that he doesn't die. And he like never runs out of arrows, which is like pretty great. Wait, never? And, like in the sh actually no, he runs out like one time. I think because like people were making jokes like, oh wow, haha, yo, so that's like three in his quiver, but he like never runs out. And then like one time in the middle of a fight scene, he actually ran out of arrows. And then he like pulled out like two swords, and it was like just as cool. So. <laughs> And he used one of his arrows to do some damage as well with his hand. He just... Yeah. I think you're probably right. <laughs> so ugly. For those of you who are watching, who would you be if you were a Lord of the Rings character? <laughs> Eric said, whoever's using magic, that's me. All the magic. Word. So, Saruman? <laughs> <laughs> like good magic or bad magic? Gandalf. Dumbledore. Ha 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 ha. Is Radagast one of the... I don't... That sounds like a Middle Earth name. <laughs> or is that a Pokemon? I forget. <laughs> I never played Pokemon, so I would not. Benjamin Rockwell would said probably an end. Mm. <laughs> Eric said I could be background sub number eighteen. It doesn't matter <laughs> as long as it's good magic. <laughs> Word. Becky said if we're talking the whole series, then Melian, Melian, Melian. Raven Shadow said Galadriel. Would you be Galadriel from The Lord of the Rings, or would you be Galadriel from Rings of Power? Some people might think that they're quite different from each other. Do you see them as both? Do you like both of them? Both? Okay, cool. Gay Rocker said, Liv Tyler, now she's magic. I don't know who Liv Tyler is. Is that one of the actresses? <laughs> Watch your head, May. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, Patrick said Shadow Fax. That's a good one. That's a pretty cool name. Shadow Fax is Gandalf's horse. That's awesome. Okay, Arwen was Liv Tyler. 
Apex said, I would be one of those really chilled out, wise old tree guys. What were they called? <laughs> they were called Ents. <laughs> tree beard, maybe? They're cool. I'm not sure who I'd be. I mean, I guess if I, I would want to be Samwise because he's just the best. <laughs> but I don't think I am. I am. I don't think I fit Samwise the most. Oh, um, I'm just talking about like who I, who I would like want to be. <laughs> I guess yeah. It's not overcomplicated. Samwise is great. He he talks about at the end of the two towers. He talks about light and shadow. Yeah, because we he's so about hyped it. up. It was cool. <laughs> he said, "It's only a passing thing, this shadow." I love that. Patrick said, "Daniel, you better know what and when Rex Manning Day is." I do not. I'm glad he said Daniel and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, who also who I really liked, especially when I was like watching the show when I was younger and really into it. I really liked Aomer. He was awesome. I forget who that is. He was the the son of the king of Rohan. And um, wait, was he the son or was he the nephew? I don't know. But he was like in charge of the Rohirrim and mm -hmm. he was very upset with the king or something. Yeah, the horse tribe guy. And um, he kind of, he had held, he kept, he still had like the, the favor of the Rohirrim and they rode off and were doing what they could to fight off the invading orcs. Mm -hmm. And he just had a lot of you could kind of see he just like had a lot of distrust in his king and his situation, and um, but he wanted to to help, and it was just kind of like a cornered animal. Nephew, mm -hmm. okay, nephew of the king, right? Because the son of the king was like a younger guy, and then I think the that guy had passed away. Anyways, when he showed up in the third movie, and he just rode up all confident to that Muma kill. And um, the rider, the driver of the Muma Kill looked at him and was like, ooh, you know, give you this, like, this face. And Amber was just like, oh, I got you. And took his spear, just hurled it, just went straight into the Muma Kill driver, who then launched off of the Muma Kill, which is like this massive war elephant. Mm -hmm. And he fell off, which then as he fell off, like, cause he would use the ears of the elephant to steer. Yeah. And so this guy who fell off, he pulled really hard on the okay. ear as with his own body weight falling. Mm -hmm. So the elephant was like, you know, and it like yeah. its head turned sideways and it started to do a hard left turn and then it smashed into another Muma kill. And mind you, there's like entire like, you know, buildings on top of these things. And they all just went like, Exactly, it's <laughs> crashing down. It was just—I just loved the, like the domino effect that that created. You know, like that's just inspiring. Like I want to be. Um, I'm in the moment. You know, the logos is taking me. I want to be like the kind of man, who can, hypothetically, like hurl a spear and it hits, the right spot. You know, mm -hmm. and I mean that more in terms of like. How I can make a difference or like influence people, you know, like when you right. say something, it can be like a weapon and mm -hmm. like a surgical weapon that just like cuts straight in maybe through, um, through the barriers and right. just resonates, you know? Yeah. All right. <laughs> 
Kristen said, love the sound effects. Thank you. <laughs> I think when I said the Logos is taking me, Eric said, there's no potion for that in Middle Earth I know of. Okay, question from Gay Rocker. Why do you think Gandalf transports? When does he transport? And Efficiency. Can you give some context? I would trans. I would transport or teleport. It's like I would teleport if I could. That's a huge time saver, dude. Uh, Eric said, can we talk about how three characters of the Fellowship sprinted for a day and a half in the second movie, though? Like, no horses, no brakes at all. Yeah, and a dwarf with them as well, which is impressive. You know, it's like, can you move your head to the side when you're painting? Yeah. It's pretty impressive if you're an elf, right? And it's really impressive if you're a human. But if you're a dwarf and you sprint like that and keep up with them, that's amazing. Okay, apparently I thought that people, that K Rocker and Eric were responding to things that I had said, but apparently not at all. <laughs> I keep reading into the comments here. And sometimes it's tough when I'm like looking at it after the after it's already been said or Yeah. But no worries. Starting to see that whip. Starting. Get it? That whip? That work in progress? Oh. <laughs> yes. Good night. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude, you know, you know that thing in the gym where you like you stick one leg up and you do like just like the one lunge? Mm, like Bulgarian no. split squats, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my mm -hmm. god, I did those two days ago. Those are great. My legs... My legs, bro. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Eric said, but where's the Nene? Not in this live stream. Now watch me whip. No. <laughs> oh, no, Schultz, not. <laughs> Kristen oh, said, Eowyn yeah. is underrepresented in this discussion, so I'm going to choose her as the Lord of the Rings character I'd like to be. Bet. If she was already represented, Kristen, would you still choose Eowyn? She is awesome. Texture. Texture is 910, by the way. All right, thank you. I was like about to ask too, that's nice. Fan brush who? Never heard of her. Ew. 
Raven Shadow said it's coming together very well. Thank you. I'm glad you think so. Apex said, the colors are reminding me of some Rubens paintings. Very nice. Appreciate that. High praise. As I'm looking at the screen and I'm looking at May's painting, I believe the exposure of the camera is a little brighter. Um, so I'm going to see if I can make a very mild adjustment here. That might be more accurate to what we're seeing. A Rocker said, so next up will be a representation of a White Walker from Game of Thrones by Daniel. You down? Mm, nope. I don't know what a White Walker <laughs> looks like, but I'm down. Sounds cool. <laughs> um, well, we just got other things on the agenda. Yeah. We got the photo shoot. Maybe next year. We got, <laughs> we got um, May's uh, Dragon Rage Channeler. <laughs> Um, so much lower. And then I got to do that landscape. Um, also, people have asked me to finish the uh, portrait that I started, or that I, since they started, I was working on last week. So we got a lot. We got a lot to cover. That texture is popping. Okay, okay. That looks like a tree now. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love to see it. All right. It's too red over there, so we'll put some yellow on it so it goes nicely with the tree, which is like more green because yellow is closer to green. If you guys haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do us a favor and yeah, that'd be nice. Do that. Oh, did you guys hear me just yawn? I apologize. I don't even remember yawning, but if I did and you I didn't heard hear it, it, I'm sorry. I did not hear anything. But, all right. Apex said, you get, I told me I get absent-minded. That is very true. Very true. I get absent-minded. Uh oh. I think you can see it on the live streams when I'm painting as well. 
Oh, nice, Kristen. Kristen said, I'd still pick Eowyn. I can relate to her level of stubborn. It's interesting that both of the sides of your painting and even the bottom are all like slightly slanted as if you've had your head tilted to the side. Which oh. might be true. <laughs> Maybe. So out of curiosity, I'm just going to it's okay. adjust the camera angle so, so that people like think looks... that it's all <laughs> <laughs> we'll just We'll just cut it later. Also, the angle of this makes it worse, but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying hi. Watch your head. Ah. That is very interesting. I think you really are a left head tilter. <laughs> <laughs> it's water in my ear. Also, with all the lights shining around. Yeah. What is going on? Mm. Time check, 9.20. Okay, thank you. This is a great brush, wow. <laughs> I just picked it up. This is just like puddling to another level. <laughs> You're going to work on the Balrog set for a little bit? Oh, well, I'm just placing it, yeah. But you know I cannot commit to like any square inch of panel. <laughs> oh, I'm actually... This lens is zoomed in all the way. Oh. That's probably more helpful, honestly, because I'll probably be like moving around. <laughs> Let me get a little closer. Mm
<laughs> Don't worry, nobody saw that. What? I've got them on the other camera right now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Did you make a mistake? I didn't even notice. Um. It's just there's like so much color surround. It's hard for it to like emerge by itself. And like also, there was like paint down underneath what I put down. So it's just like it it has to like mix to a certain extent. You know what I mean? So the color's just like not popping out the way I wanted it to. You know, like a little annoyed, but you know. So if it's not popping out, then you've got to. I have to tone down everything around it. Mm. Why? Because it's all relative. Yeah. <laughs> Learn today. It's like in the middle of all that fire, you know? So like, would it make sense if I just grade things down, right? I think your red is more red than the reference. Really? So you're in a good place. It's so nice up close. I'm tempted to just keep going forward more and more forward. God, hello. <laughs> yeah, this camera is really close to me. It's probably visible in the uh, the other shot. And we this is on at like 140 zoomed in already. Whoa. Well, but but it's pretty. I small. haven't put in another reason why it's not popping out is because I haven't put in like those insane like highlights yet either. Highlights. Because there's like fire kind of like going through like the holes in the horns or whatever. So it's just like this neon like white yellow. And like all together that'll make, like like this stuff. Like if I put some of this stuff like in here, it would like emerge as well. Mm. I just haven't done that yet, so. Maybe I'm judging a little prematurely. <laughs> this is what Daniel has to deal with, all these sound effects. Um, Gay Rocker asked question, why not cover the whole surface of the panel? So she would just Time. cut it. <laughs> yeah, but she would, could just cut it down so that the whole, what, like the size that she's working at yeah. works out. It is interesting how up close we get to see like, you know, the individual brush strokes and things, but it's not really until we're zoomed back that we see the effect of all those Strokes. Like he said, just a thought, adding Thor jumping down from the lightning would be a fun add-in. <laughs> Four hours. <laughs> I'm not thinking about that right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> How are we doing? I just like another thing happened where just you know, the um, the brush just rolls right onto the paint, and it's like mm. so lovely when that happens. Mm -hmm. I don't feel silly at all.
Alright, I'm gonna try to add those crazy highlights and see how it goes. If it works. Here we go. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Y'all wanna see this. Dun dun dun. Chroma. I wonder if something like load paint on there, dude. Like just straight up scooping right now. This is disgusting. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. Very unpredictable. That worked though. See? So just to give you some Balrog anatomy, mm -hmm. the Balrog is roaring and with its open maw, there's like a very hot flame from the inside. I see. See how long this like scoop lasts? I'm gonna run it it's out. It's getting contaminated. Yeah. Those like first few beads though, oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Um. I'm never ever doing that again on a painting, probably. Wow. Um, Ibex said, highly advanced scoop paint technique. Do not try this at home, please. And Eric agreed, super hot fire. Thank you. I'm assuming that's I think like a for the compliment. for the mouth. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> It has like a whole rib cage in here, like whatever that is, but like it's kind of physically impossible to put it in with this kind of texture. I think. <laughs> I mean, there's probably a way, I just don't. That's no, not bad. Uh. Wait. What? Eric had said super hot fire and then said the dualism. I should probably reveal where that comes from, Daniel. Where what comes from? Is there something I don't understand, as usual? Okay, Rocker said, and the spectators look on in amazement as an apple was seared and scorched from the tree of knowledge. Here comes the lore. What is going on? Oh, what is going on? Apex said, but wait, seriously, what's the, the best way to layer wet paint on top of wet paint? Not this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is just what I'm doing. <laughs> just scoop and pray? No. There's something better out there. Um, you shouldn't have to layer it if you're working wet. It, I mean, I don't know. Like, ultimately, yeah. you're not supposed to, like, blend, like, on the, on what you're working on. 
it's not that like you can't or that you shouldn't, but you're kind of like you'd want to. You'd have to have more of a plan for it, and you'd take your time. And every, it's like um, you're you'd be expecting that when you add that layer on top, that it might mingle a little bit. Or you just keep getting denser and denser as you go. Yeah, very deliberate. Jeff said no blending. Yes, definitely. No blending. You would just lay in, like, you'd be like one stroke and then probably clean your brush, go pick some more paint up from your palette, one stroke down, that kind of work. Especially for something like that's super colorful like this. We teach a puddling technique in block seven that's Kind of like that, where it does get layered up, and um, it's not quite as like like this is a this painting is um, it just has a lot of things like <laughs> interacting and swimming with each other. So, um, but the way that we take teach the puddling is that you're doing all of your like quote unquote softening by simply adding values and they just naturally will when you step back they appear to be soft by the transitions of those individual strokes but may doesn't have time on her side i don't know what's going on <laughs> what's that i don't know what's going on there's so much I'm just like, my eyes are just staring at like this texture and I've just like never perceived it before, like off my own brush. And I just like, don't know how I feel. Um, it's fine. I'm okay. I'm just like bewildered. <laughs> like, where did I come up with this? <laughs> how am I scooping paint right now? <laughs> How tempted are you at this point to like wrap up and plan to glaze? Like, have you thought about that at all? Nope. I am thinking about this interesting texture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what if I create it? You know, they look like cupcakes. It's like icing. It's like there's like it's like yeah. three dimensional. Oh yeah, we no, we can see them. They really pop out. Weird. But like, I like it. But like, I feel like I shouldn't because <laughs> it's like really sloppy. Well, we talked about how it, you know, Sargent's work, it would look like a mess up, up close, and then you step True. back and it looks super legit. Super realistic. Word. Word. Warp. It's getting there. I think that there's room for like an overall value shift, which would be so easily handled in the glaze. glaze. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see you painted the elf guy at some point. Um, a I little bit. That. I just put his shadows in. I still have to like, I'm just gonna dip my brush in white because I don't care. Um, I will commit heresy and... <laughs> I'm gonna grab a brush real quick. Yeah, so I'm just gonna grab white and just run it up that run it up that mountain and like all that elf dude. Oh, okay. So I'll just move it over here. Yeah, and then uh, I have to get rid of a lot of transfer lines in the uh, in the sky. They can probably see them. They're pretty bad. <laughs> well. 
Apex, that looks cool though, like an expressionistic painting. It's a feast for the eyes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you like it. It is indeed. RJD said, even Expressive. in the photo, all I see is fire and smoke. No idea what it actually is in there. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the idea. Um, you and then see what I'm struggling with? <laughs> Jeff said that, yeah, this is a tough image to paint from. And then Apex said, that's an extremely difficult image to paint. <laughs> yeah, especially all a prima. Yeah, like if, if I could layer this and just like render oh, slow so easy. And, and time constraint, you know, I'd be chilling. <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> It's, it's all okay, my though. fault, guys. No, no, no. <laughs> this is fun. It's a fun challenge. I'm learning things about myself. Like, I'm capable of, like, that. Wait, are you... Hold on. I'm so confused. Are you work, what are you working on? No. I, <laughs> what did I say I was working on? You said, oh, I said I was working on the sky and, and doing this. Oh, my bad. You're good. One second. I have all this yellow on my brush, and I must use all of it. <laughs> or it take me, like, two seconds. <laughs> okay. Scooping. Oh my god. <laughs> what is she doing? Kevin's probably like screaming. Whatever you're house. doing, we can't see it. Oh, that's okay. Good. Hopefully Kevin's so not screaming in the elf. his house. <laughs> huh? Go, go paint the elf. Everybody with me. <laughs> <laughs> All this pressure. All this... Oh, what is this? May, you should step back all the way to where I am and take a look at this painting that this you're making. This brush is filthy. I'll do that after I put in this, this heretical white. Actually, no, I'm gonna mix it with like the light gray. This is a stiff, disgusting brush. Wow, I'm not using that. <laughs> Why is this so hard? Um, Gay Rocker asks, how does lightning appear with no surrounding cloud? How indeed? There's a lot of clouds. Oh, that's smoke. I don't know. Magic. Isn't that the whole show? Wait. Eric said, sometimes your boat is in rough waters. I made a painting about that. Well, I'm working on a painting about that. <laughs> you are. And then Eric said, you just have to keep rowing. Oh, I need to adjust the focus. Keep going, you're good. Okay. I'm gonna move down to a smaller brush. I just painted the... <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Chaos! Chaos and anarchy. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh, oh my. my. Pastos? Oh my. I'm working my way to the elf. I'm taking my time, so you guys have to stay here. <laughs> Kristen A said... Or Kristen Nyala said, a new old Holland paint color, heretical white. True. So true. Or we could also call it feeling rebellious. Call it feeling desperate. I think that's more accurate. <laughs> it is 941. Oh my god. You're doing good. Have you, uh, have you stepped back yet? Eric said, white. Mm. Sounds. <laughs> Wesley said, I think it's amazing that you've done this much in such a short amount of time. It takes me four hours to paint one object and block one right now. This is one crazy object. I'm right there with you. Well, Wesley, don't beat yourself up over it. It just takes some time to, like, make sure you're getting it right. That's more important. And then speed comes with experience. But don't rush. So true. Daniel, I appreciate you like having sentient language right now because like I don't. Also, watch your head. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Jeff said, "I wonder if that reference would have been a good one for doing a monochromatic underpainting and then glaze color over the top." Absolutely. That would. Do you know how much easier <laughs> that would be? How much easier, May? Tell us. Monumentally. Substantially, like earth shakingly easier, bro. That would be crazy. And what's also interesting is that it probably would crazy. take the same amount of time total. No, literally. Um, and that's what we call our speed painting technique, which is like the layer technique. 
we call it speed painting. I know there's, you know, speed painting is normally kind of what we're doing right now. <laughs> but we call speed painting like our layered technique. And we just say that just because it's like the total amount of hours goes faster. Like Maze has to work a lot harder <laughs> to finish this in the time constraint. But if she could, guys. if she had multiple days, then she could do this painting in the same amount of time and um, with a lot less effort. Though perhaps with a little bit less expression. Less fun. Less aggression. Less aggression. Watch your hair. I, I like cannot. <laughs> it's not something in my control. I'm oh, sorry, God. May. It's okay. I'm doing it for the fans. I'm being harassed by this painting. Oh my God. I'm just making, I'm just making things up at this point. Give me that contrast. Oh, that's ugly. Never mind. <laughs> I hope this is entertaining for everyone. Mm. Now, RJD said, but is white still white after it mixes with the paint on the canvas? That's so true, Gusty. Probably not. <laughs> so hey, I'm, RJD, now you're now May's bestie. I'm losing my mind right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> God. Okay. What was that? What? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Always one step ahead, Daniel. I almost had you, but I had the... Uh... I'm always three square inches on the canvas ahead of you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> almost had you. Almost. I'll get you next time. Absolutely not. Forbidden. Forbidden content. It's really not that bad. It just like look dumb. But I don't know. It's whatever. <laughs> Wait, what? What? <laughs> Did you say you have to look dumb? No. Oh. Good. Because <laughs> if that was what you said, I wouldn't approve. <laughs> I'm worried about it. Now, Gay Rocker is posing the question, is white still white on a dirty brush? Mmm. Stop making me think right now. I cannot do this. Just don't listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> Though Eric said, I'm definitely entertained. And Kristen said, extremely entertaining. This was me <laughs> trying to oil paint on a pumpkin Monday night. I'm glad you're enjoying my, like... Lack of composure. Your theatrics. <laughs> this is definitely how I normally paint. We came for the painting, stayed for the theatrics. <laughs> you just need to like find more and more like insane references for me to do in like one session and like everyone will just like love it. <laughs> Everyone's like, wow, I'm so glad that's not me right now. Hardy, hard, hard. Apex said this might turn into evolved martial artist. <laughs> what does that mean? What We've been busting some moves. They don't make the painting faster. I won't learn them. Oh, that's the wrong blue. Silly. Okay. Ooh, that's nice. I like it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Most mindless like, commentary from me. I have that like TikTok audio in my head. Chrissy, wake up! Because <laughs> like <laughs> all these like all, yeah, all these like dead areas of shadow. I'm like, Chrissy, wake up! I don't like this. <laughs> just keep, just keep going, May. No, I mean yeah, it's probably gonna happen. I'm like, this is the descent. This is this is the breaking point. This is where I start making abstract art and like using white and black. And, Calling everything untitled, you know what I mean? Untitled no number 76. Mm. You know you're prolific when all of your work is untitled number <laughs> something. Ridiculous. I That's like not even in the reference. You're moving on to new places? Yeah, I'm traversing. Traversing? This, I'm traversing this panel at wondrous speeds. 
I'm just going to zoom out for a little yeah. while. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> when Meg gets towards the end, she just starts going everywhere. Yeah. This is, if this is your first time watching, this is a great one to tune into. <laughs> Daniel, you would agree, right? This is like entertaining. Uh, put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, like for me. That's entertaining. Yeah. No, I'm having a great time. Yeah. I, I mean, like other people are. Yeah. I hope. I, I hope mean, you're enjoying this content. I will say, just watching the fallen angel painting happen. Oh yeah. Was just so magical, for me because it was like we hadn't done anything like that. Yeah, that was our first on yet. like one session, one painting thing. Mm -hmm. We didn't bite off more than we can chew, and now here we are. <laughs> Biting. I'm off. chewing this dog. You are digesting it. I am digesting this. <laughs> It's painting in my large intestine right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>
and I apologize if I cough a couple times to get it out. Okay, um, Eric said, I have to staple my monies, May. Crying emoji. So yes, what? we will do that, oh. though. Yeah. I have to buy the staples, too. What? Talking about a commission, uh -oh. I think. Yeah. And that it might take some time. Yeah, no problem. To put the money together. I'm chilling. Eric said, also, does anyone else see that pair of eyes in the black puddle on the palette? Okay, let's go, everybody. What? Here we go. Where is this? What are we talking about right now? Pair of eyes, black puddle. You see puddle. what I'm doing? Oh, I do see it. Wait, what? Wait, see what you're doing? Hold on. Do you see this on the brush? I'm trying to do two things at once. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, bring it back towards your face so that it goes in focus. A little bit more. <laughs> you, can, you step back a little bit and then put it right. Yeah. Y yeah. A little bit more. Perfect. Wow, that is uh, spiky. It looks like Guy Fieri, bro. <laughs> um, is that the... That's for um, the lightning. Ah, wait, hold on. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Just going for it. Look at that confidence, everybody. Did you see me just dipping on the palette? You're moving very quickly. Sorry. <laughs> I'll just do it more. It serves me. Hmm, little dib dabs. Ridiculous. Kevin's crying. I did not raise you to do this, to behave in such a manner in public. Oh, that's, that's working for me, dog. <laughs> that's popping. Now, if this was a, um, oh. a speed painting in our layered approach, then you would have had the liberty to make a nice soft edge around it all and then drop in those nice sharp edges. This is true. As it is, we just have the sharp edges. Oh, okay. That's Just convenient. Drop, That's convenient. Dropping some of that in. Interesting choices. Yeah, I wanted. I want the wings to pop. Man. I want to do it like on the hordes, but there's already like so much going on in there. Like I don't. I don't want to mess with it. No, I think the values in the horns are awesome. Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave that as it is. <clears throat> Have you stepped back yet and appreciated the, your I handiwork? I have not perceived it from afar. You yeah. should, especially because we're coming near the end. I'll do it at the end. How's at that? the very end? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you sure? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's crazy. Why? <laughs> okay, maybe like five minutes before the end. Is it five minutes before the end? If I said yes, would you step back? <laughs> oh my god. All these mind games. <laughs> All this manipulation. No, I'm kidding. I step back quite a lot when I'm painting. I don't Which sometimes bites me in the foot because there's time when you need to just commit to whatever choices you made and see them through to the end. So knowing when to step back is just something that comes with experience. Jeremy's Closet, I guess we'll just call Jeremy, nice. said May is rocking the crap out of this painting. Thank Flipping you. B-E-A-U-T-F-O-L. You're so kind. I'm gonna zoom us in on the Balrog face because we just saw some changes there. Let's see how that pans out. Yar. <laughs> Did you just say yar? Yeah, that's hard to say <laughs> yes sometimes. Okay. May is becoming the Balrog, everybody. I'm, I'm just saying things. Let me live. Oh, that's green. That's ugly. Ah, not not my not my gradient. Not my <laughs> not my colors. Not my gradient. Not my gradient. Like, you know, like not my president. Yeah. <laughs> rah, are you rah rah? No, I hate my school. Just kidding. I'm just saying things. I'm so sorry. Oh. <laughs> uh. Where am I? May, it's the journey, not the destination. Where that, are you? That's your encouragement from and I'm so Apex. sorry. From who? Debbie said, real, rad, and raw. Awesome look into this work, May. Thank you. I wonder what you're all seeing that I'm not seeing, because I'm like up in this dude's face right now. <laughs> Eric Hunt said, Balrog, the Corsair captain. Yar. <laughs> Yar. 
<laughs> yeah, you get it. That's what I'm saying. So I like hung out with like, um, let's say like dude friends over the weekend. So I'm just picking up on their like silly little slang. I think Yara is just like hilarious though. <laughs> just like it sounds so overly like Viking-like, but it's just like, yeah, affirmative, <laughs> Yar. Um. <clears throat> Emotional damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did it come from? What's the context? <laughs> I don't know. It's like just like a video. It's just like. Did it have something to do with Yar or did it have something to do with the painting? Oh, the painting. Oh, it's like oh, there's so oh, much. Oh, because of the. The tree's on fire, so yeah. it's getting emotional damage. There's so much pasta going on right now, and so it's like hard to add more pasta. By pasta, I mean impasto, and Kevin always like clowns on me for saying pasta, but I think it's funnier. And so I was like, oh, one day you're gonna be like in a convention, and you're gonna like be talking about your technique, and you're gonna like just say that you use pasta, and everyone's gonna think that you're like stupid. And I'm like, that's okay. Cause I know what I mean. It's a fun bit, because I think he said <laughs> he didn't know what, like, glazing meant for, like, a really long time. Mm -hmm. And, like, one time someone, like, mentioned it to him. Like, they were like, oh, have you ever, like, tried glazing? He was like, donuts. And so I'm like, at least I won't say that, you know. <laughs> it could be worse. We got to roast Kevin at least once in these live streams. That's so true. We haven't, we haven't done it enough this time, so that's why I'm... That was our first roast of Kevin for the evening. Mean right now. I got him pretty good last week, though. That was hilarious. We're double scooping. This is like ice cream. This is like Ben and Jerry's out here, bro. Oh my god! That's so much <laughs> Ooh, that's good though. Hold on. No, no, no. That's good. <laughs> I'll leave it? Maybe. Just, you should look back and, and assess it. It's like too white. I wanted more yellow. It's like a few parts. I was... I'm just double scooping. I am... This is ridiculous. Wow. What is going on? Gay Rocker said, leave it. Okay. It pops. It does. And it actually pops all the way to where I am. Dang. That's a lot of popping. Mm-hmm. Like in a good way, Daniel? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> like a crackling pop that that's you would get out of a whip that's a that's crackling perfect. whip of fire. <clears throat> And RJD said, Yar May should paint Captain Jack Sparrow. Yar. Oh my god, I would. I would love to do that. I love that man. He's a good man. He's a good man. He's fantastic. What time is it? Are we like over already? Uh, it is now 10 o'clock. Oh. Okay. You have an hour. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we did say... Um, Four hours max. I was literally thinking three this entire time. Oh Good, God. because it, that helps bring you to this point in the painting. Yar. Apex said, <laughs> the painting is more important than the painting. So true. I mean the verb and the noun. So true, bestie. Where's my... Oh, another bestie. <laughs> no. Have you not heard this? <laughs> Have you not heard this slang before? It's like, so true, bestie. Um, As like a I have, yeah. but I mean, if you're going to say it, you got to mean it, you know what I mean? I do mean it. <laughs> so now you have two besties? Why are you challenging my character right now? Watch your head. Oh my god, that's a lot of pain actually. I'm going to calm down a little bit. <clears throat> Yar. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, let me live, bro. <laughs> Let me say my silly little things as I work on my silly little painting, bro. It's like not that hard. Puts me down. Yar. <laughs> Give yeah. the woman some peace, bro.
I have to add like all these leaves like flying out from the tree because mm. it's getting like wet, bro. That's crazy. Well, like all the leaves are like this dark green. So mm. they can stand out against like the light background. Wow. It's so good for that one. What? Where are my brushes? I'm just like putting them in places. I don't really, yeah, it's fine. No one knows any better anyway. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Um. I'm thinking I have to go with that like brush dipping thing for like what's down here as well because it's just like not showing up. Yeah. <clears throat> what? <laughs> Am I not allowed to comment on my own work? <laughs> oh, you are. God damn. Keep going. Let me live. Becky said, I love how she makes sounds. Makes me wonder. <laughs> 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 makes me wonder if she would go and tell someone, yes, this is the Balrog, yar. <laughs> and not even realize she is saying yar. It's fun. Um, okay, Jeremy's Closet just asked, question, what do you like most about oil paintings, oil paints compared to acrylics? I have a YouTube video about that, um, so you should watch that. So instead. true. Um, but basically, also, so that if I'll do, give the, the quick summary, you'll find online tons of people searching how to um, make your acrylic paintings look like oil paintings, but you will never find people asking how to make your oil paintings look like acrylic paintings. And with that, I will give you a link to um, my thoughts. Now, I don't say that one is, you know, objectively better than the other, but I talk about it from the perspective of learning, and I make the case that oil paint is better for learning. <coughs> Yeah, I just dropped a link in, link in there for you. <clears throat> All right, Gay Rocker then said, next question, canvas versus panels. May, go. Panels, because, I mean, for me, um, <laughs> because they're like smooth, you need less paint to cover. Um, you don't have to worry about glare as much when you're working because there's less texture. Also, easier to purchase and prepare for yourself. <laughs> um, Generally cheaper, yeah. That's my take. <clears throat> so that's a uh, more of an opinionated take from May. Yeah. <laughs> so they have pros and cons. Yeah. And um, it can depend on just what you want the end result to look like. Mm -hmm. They're both good subs substrates to work on. Um, and then one important distinction to make is that the um, that canvas is typically cotton canvas which is not archival, but then linen, which people will also refer to as canvas, is archival. And um, so I would say linen is the best, then panel is next <coughs> down the list, Sorry. and then canvas is at the bottom of that list. So canvas is really, is nice because it's kind of like linen um, and it's good for studies. The paint will naturally uh, mix in with itself a little bit more, whereas it's a little bit more difficult on the panel. The panel will show off the brush strokes more, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you want to go for. Yeah. So <clears throat> painting that's done on a panel might, yeah, like I said, it's just going to show the brush strokes. It might be a little more edgy, a little <laughs> more brush strokey, <coughs> whereas the canvas or the, or the linen, things will just be a little bit softer and that more classic oil paint feel. Of course, you can build up the paint and so then, and then where you build those those parts up, then you would not have that canvas texture, 
and then you could leave other parts with that tint canvas texture so you you do have a little more flexibility there so for our students we have them do canvas because it's nice and cheap and it's good again it's just really good for studies also makes gradients a little bit easier <coughs> and Gay Rocker asks, is this cheap canvas panels or masonite? So this, so, so masonite is basically what May is working on, the panel, and then a cheap canvas panel would be, what I imagine you're asking is like when someone takes a canvas and stretches it around a panel, and um, that would be the same thing, basically. It's not going to have a give, like if it's a stretched canvas, then it's going to have more of a give, like when your brush puts pressure on the canvas, it's going to give in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you can absolutely use a canvas panel, and it's pretty much the same thing, especially when you're learning. Apex said, Ar some art styles don't <coughs> try to have really soft edges and lines to separate really realistic effects. Cartoons and comic book styles are examples. Acrylic is good for styles like that. Yep. And Gay Rocker said, yeah, I kind of like the give in Canvas. Mary Jo just asked, is May puddling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. She kind of started off with a speed painting approach as her initial pass and then has now been puddling on top of that initial <clears> pass. <throat> Yep. Is that fair? Yep. Okay. She's going to change the focus back onto the Balrog. You still dancing around the painting? Um, like, I, I, like, physically can't put any more paint down. Like, <laughs> hmm. it's, like, stacking. Which is fine. I kind of wanted to, like, get to that point with this one. I was like, it would be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. I made that. What the heck? <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Thank you. Step back more. <laughs> Step back more. I, want, I need to add more red. Do I need to add more red. Your voice is actually worse. <laughs> Becky just asked, would you let it dry and then apply more on top of it? I could glaze, yeah. If she wanted. Am I, am I stepping back all the way? Are you? Yeah. I actually can't zoom out any more than what we're seeing. Oh, I need so to I'm going to have to move the camera. <clears throat> Still got to go further back. There's so much like going on. <laughs> Step further back. Ooh. She says. <laughs> it's kind of nice. I told you. Kind of nice. I know you soften the edges of the smoke on that, on the <coughs> in the right, like the top mm. right corner, like with that like arch thing and like that little hole. I have to like soften that. Mm. Not too shabby, man. Otherwise, kind of, kind of cool. Kind of dope. Kind of nice. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> what? Gay Rock said, "Daniel, we can hear you, man." When I was whispering. Yeah, that was the idea. What were you saying? If I want you guys to not hear me, I will just turn off my mic and turn yeah. off her mic, and then I can tell her things. Literally. But I haven't done that at all this whole stream. Apex said, scoop and stack technique is surprisingly cool. <laughs> Thanks. Surprising for me too, dog. Just watch your head as you're painting that section. Yeah. I think you might be a little... Do you need to move the painting over to the left side? Oh, it's fine. It's fine? Okay. Yeah, I think so.
May, have you ever been trained in impressionistic painting? No. But you're making an impressionistic painting now. Mm-hmm. How did you do it? I learned how to paint realistically, so I know the foundations of what makes for a readable image. And so I can, like, manipulate those factors um, to be, like, more or less specific. So obviously now, like, my edges and stuff are not super specific. <laughs> um, but I'm controlling everything else so that there is, like, a clear focal point. There's, like, a clear, like, action going on. Mm -hmm. So it's like I have, like, all the tools, but I'm, like, choosing which ones to use. Yeah. Instead of, like, only having one tool. Um, <clears throat> it's weird to have, like, too much then, not enough. Education. There's, like, blue up there. I didn't even see it. What the heck? <laughs> Sorry. Watch your head. Apex told me I'm going to lose my head if I keep telling you that. Literally. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Don't worry about it. But yeah, exactly. It's pretty cool just to be able to, like, make such an impressionistic painting and yet never having been taught, like, this is how you make an impressionistic <laughs> painting. But again, it just comes back to those fundamentals. Okay, now we can't see no, it's it. That's okay, it's okay. <laughs> um, I'm just going to, like, uh, look at just... it without the reference. Okay. For a sec. And drink so water. So she's just using values, edges, and color, her understanding of light and shadow, all these fundamentals to do the same thing, and then just the application of her brushes, her brush strokes are just a little bit different, but she's still looking for the same effects. And um, that's how we teach and evolve, just teaching you those fundamentals, and then it's just amazing to see how it applies in so many different directions, like this painting here. I remember when I saw this in the Google Drive folder when you shared it with me, and I was like, what? <laughs> That's why I texted you. I was like, one session? You were like, yeah, we have other. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, I didn't tell, I didn't even tell May that I was giving her uh, a Four. time limit to finish this one. Yeah. <clears throat> so you accepted this like a champ, and you came <laughs> out with an awesome painting. Thank you. I mean, that is sweet. I think it's done. Pretty, like. I like how, how chunky it is right now. There's like still transfer lines in the sky though. Maybe I should do something about that. <clears throat> um. oh my God. I bet you could sell this painting. Any takers? I mean, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> if anyone's really into it, that'd be cool. I'm not working without the reference. I'm just trying to make it look better by itself. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna have to move the camera again. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be just in the sky for a little bit. Okay. I wanna get rid of the transfer lines as much as I can. Um. Is it, are they like visible, like on camera? Probably. Um, <laughs> hold on. It. A little bit, yeah. If I look for them. Hmm. They're certainly not present in the overall impression. Yeah, that's good. Which I would argue is more important for a painting like this. Yeah. I really like those leaves on coming <laughs> off the tree. Thanks.
Jeremy said, I'm coming back for more of your lives. This is nice. A little humor, laughter, acknowledgement of the comments coming in. Good job involving your community. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, and if you want to work on your Evolve assignments, you're more than welcome to. <coughs> A little paint along, paint and chat. <laughs> but we make sure that there's always two of us so that um, we can, you know, be engaged and interact with you guys while May puts most of her attention and energy into the painting, hence all the fun sounds. <laughs> Entertaining on two different levels right now. <laughs> so yeah, okay, here's our, my, guys, this is going to be our um, depth, atmospheric depth landscape painting right here in this little bottom corner. So back there is these mountains. <clears throat> Let's imagine that all those mountains, like, well, we've got a mountain actually on the, that's supporting the tree in the main scene, and that mountain is like green and blue and black, but then way off in the distance, these mountains, which are arguably the same up close, are now red, orange, and then yellow as they go back into the distance. <clears throat> the reason why they're such a drastically different color is because those mountains in the distance are becoming the color and the value of the atmosphere of this painting, hence, in this case, the sky. So they're becoming more yellow slowly, bit by bit, with each ridge line. It's getting, the color is getting more like the sky and the value is getting more like the sky. And her edges, she's keeping her edges sharp so that those distinctions are defined. So if you watch one of my YouTube videos where I talk about how to make realistic paintings, I kind of cover this a little bit. Um, and then I also do a YouTube video about creating backgrounds for paintings, and I cover the same thing. But basically, if you have these values, edges, and color, so which is what we teach and Evolve, the three moving parts to any painting, and you have those three tools to create depth. So again, in this case, you're diminishing your values, like the front mountain in that little corner there, the value of that is not as dark as the shadows of the mountain in the very front of the focal point of the painting. So the value is getting lighter, it's becoming more like the atmosphere. And then the color is not, it's not green, it's on that red, that red color. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming again more in the zone of the yellows and then as each mountain goes back it just does that again and again and again until it just pretty much disappears into the distance. And so May is using, again, she's using her values to push it back. She's using her colors to push it back. But she decided to leave her edges sharp. So you can also create depth with your edges by having soft edges. So if she just blurred those out, they would drop off even further, kind of. If she blurred them so much, then we probably wouldn't even know what they are. So in this case, she decided to just leave her edges sharp so that we know what they are, but then continue to use the values and the colors to drop them back. Let me know if that made sense. If you want more information on that, then I can provide a link for you. Ooh, I still have to sign this painting. <laughs> Apex said, I feel like I'm being told the secrets of the universe. <laughs> is this like a metaphor for life? It's so simple, it's actually crazy how simple it is. And you can apply the same concept between, if you're doing a portrait, between a nose and an ear, right? So <clears throat> um, let's say, oh, I gotta change the camera again. Sorry. But for an ear, imagine like an ear, like an ear on a, like in a photograph, the ear is the same distance from the nose as, like as the ear is, except that you know that because that person's head, if they, if they were going to turn to their side, that the nose and the ear would be like a few inches away from each other. So how do you create depth between that nose and the ear? And then you got to think, okay, well, I have these three moving parts. I've got values, edges, and color. 
So which one of those three do you want to use to create the depth? If you use uh, your edges to create the depth, then you might have a very blurry ear. And I don't know about you, but a blurry ear, like a fuzzy ear, feels kind of weird. So maybe that's not the first option to go with. What about color? So let's say that the background in the portrait that we're imagining together is more gray. What if we make the ear a little more gray? Mm, well, that's kind of weird because ears are very colorful, right? They have a lot of light. It kind of bounces through them because they're pretty translucent. Okay. So then what about value? Huh, maybe we use value to push them back. So maybe the shadows in the ear aren't quite as dark. Or if the background is dark, maybe they're even darker. Um, but you can use value to drop it back and then leave your edges somewhat sharp, just sharp enough so that you know what it is. And then the color, you can leave the color very chromatic if you so desire, but still get the depth that you want. And so it's always, it's like this toggling effect, this push and pull. I think we're good. We're good? Yeah. Okay, let's get one last look as we wrap up here. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> It looks pretty swag from back here. No cap. Oh, Eric Hunt just said signature. Word. 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 I guess I have to move the camera again. Um, we'll do it like down here. Ah. What was that? Okay. <laughs> you know, it would be really cool if I like signed it in like lightning somehow. It's too structured though. Silly, silly alphabet. This is disgusting. Uh, what am I using? I'm gonna use blue. Not me puddling my signature. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. Maybe it should have been red instead, but I don't know. I like the blue. <laughs> no, it's good. Yay. That's sweet. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> this was fun. Now, now I know. I this can't wait to see it cropped. Like, look at how nice it looks in the screen. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, in person, you can just see the yeah. walkiness. Of it. <laughs> yeah. That's nice really sweet. Thank you. Looks like I said, pretty cool. Finito. <laughs> this is something emoji. I'm capable of. Like, like, I know that now. That's cool. Oh, That's awesome. That's so much pasta, bro. Thank There's you. gotta be some hardcore fan out there that would just <laughs> absolutely love to own this painting. Close up on signature. Sure thing. <laughs> Looks like I gotta go much closer. This might I be could too post close. like in Reddit or something. You know, like r slash Lord of the Rings or whatever. Mm. I started signing like the the year on my paintings because mm -hmm. I think it's like be a nice like means of documentation later.
but like the twos look like Z's. <laughs> so I try to like do a cross through the Z, so there's like a distinction. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> So you almost took out the um, that little white part right there? Yeah. <laughs> Glad we didn't. Yeah, I love that. It's hidden. Thank you. And then look at the trees, uh, sorry, the leaves, guys. Oh, the ones that are like flying away. Mm -hmm. Those are fun. It's all in the details. That's actually not true. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not true at all. Right now it is. In this very specific case. Well done. <laughs> Came out great. Well, the horns definitely come out. Really? Good. Good. I was I was like actually worried for like a good like 30 minutes there. I was like, mm. I don't know if they're gonna like emerge from the rest of this painting. Let's make a thumbnail with this. You want to just like put your hand and a brush in there? Yeah, sure. With a Guy Fieri brush. <laughs> um, Who's Guy Fieri? He's this dude. See the guy with the white spiky hair? Yeah, exactly. That's why I kept saying like Guy Fieri brush. <clears throat> All righty. A little. So uh, yeah, everyone, whoever's around, can join us for a little thumbnail shot. Uh, yeah, your face is not going to be in it. We're like super close up here. Maybe try, um, maybe do your hand like kind of coming in a little bit more towards the tree. So, yeah, like more like that. And then just like slide your hand over slowly, just bit by bit. Keep going. Oh, I forgot to record this. Wait, did I? Did I? I don't know. Oh no, I may have forgotten to record this. I mean, we have the recording. It's like don't a, worry. It's gonna be on YouTube. Yeah, for those of you who are on YouTube, don't worry. It will still be there. But um, we normally, ah, uh, I didn't. We normally record a high quality version. It's okay. Sad, sad. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, yeah, you just bring your hand up a little more. We want to see a bit of that hand. So bring your hand closer to the end of the brush. Yeah, just for the thumbnail's sake. And then just slide it over to the right a little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And then pretend as if you're about to like paint it to the horn or something of the bell rock. Beautiful. That's our thumbnail. I'm so afraid to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you everybody. Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. This was great. And um, awesome. Thanks for the memory. Thanks all for your time. Thank you again. Thanks for uh, um, cool. enjoying my hysterics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great. Thank you all and have a wonderful evening. See you next week for our photo shoot training. Yeah, take care. <laughs>